Connor. Great game coming your way. We just saw a great game. Dave Dorn walking in into Tallahassee. They've won there the last two times he's played this Tallahassee team. They have won. Let's see if they can make it three in a row. On the other side, though, Willie Taggart and his boys, they need a W themselves coming off a win last week. A nice bounce back for them. We'll see without James Blackman or with James Blackman. We don't know. He's got some health issues. We'll see who's under center. Is it Alex Hornybrook? We'll talk about that. We've got everything coming your way to get you set for this game. 7.30, which is just under 44 minutes to go, which means, fellas, next to me, we got some work to do. Let's roll. We got a little time here. Bayer Thomas, I know Emac's a big fan of his. He'll be coming their way, maybe catching some passes, looking to get his second touchdown of the campaign on the road down at Tally. That game's coming up just under 25 minutes. NC State, Florida State, we're taking you right up to kickoff. We'll be back here in just a minute. Back here on the huddle, that's James Blackman, folks. Still no word if he's going to be playing or not. That knee injury he suffered last week. He's been saying he's good to go. He's warming up. We'll find out if it's him or Alex Hornibrook under center here in just over 25 minutes. Dab up. What up, son? Let's go, baby. <laughs> he's starting to get some muscles. He looks good, man. That guy can move. I'm you serious. see that handshake they had? That's crazy. What we got going on here, James? We got to do an instant replay down. on that thing and ask him what that's about. <laughs> We're rolling out of the truck, guys. We'll, we'll work that up for all ACC. <laughs> <laughs> when we come back, we're going to break down the game that's coming your way here in just a few minutes. 7.30 kickoff. Florida State, NC State, Cam Akers, one of the best in the business. Top 10 in FBS. Rushing yard just over buck 25 a game. But NC State's rush defense, 14th in the nation. It's going to be strength against strength. We'll break down the game after the break. Back here on the huddle between games. Matt McKay looking to Dice up that Florida State defense. We'll see if he can do that on the road. This is their first ACC game. They want to come out of the shoot with a W for sure. Let's get a game breakdown for the guys that are going to call it down in Tallahassee. Tim Hasselback and Dave O'Brien. The Seminoles of FSU are home for a game they need to win facing NC State with a chance to move above 500 and also win some of their fans over. And tonight, looking forward to this one, looking forward to a close one, and looking forward to getting deeper into the quarterback situation for FSU, Tim, because it's fascinating. Hornibrook came off the bench when Blackman went down last weekend, and he really saved their bacon. Listen, he played extremely well. There was a plan for him to come in, and then because of the James Blackman injury, he finished the game and brought them back. And really, I think he was a calming presence for that offense. You know, whoever hands off the football will hand it off most likely to Cam Akers, the outstanding running back for the Knowles. Yeah, he's tremendous. I think when you look at Cam Akers, he's the guy that makes everything go for this Florida State offense and he's always falling forward. Does such a great job of creating yards on his own, and he really is the challenge when you look at defending this Florida State offense. NC State comes in at 3-1. and one. They are very young. They are a young team, but I do think that they are talented on that side of the football. They're young, they're inexperienced, they've played on the road and struggled. And I think Dave Dorn, who's done a nice job with this NC State program, he thinks they're more prepared for this challenge to go on the road and play a talented group in Florida State. All right, NC State has won the last two meetings. FSU desperate not to fall to two and three on the season. Kickoff coming your way at 7.30 from Tallahassee. Thanks a lot, fellas. Just about over 12 minutes till we get to kick off back in Tallahassee. They, they broke down the quarterback situation, which is really what this is. The conversation starts and finishes around right. Florida State right now. Coach, if you are Willie Taggart right, right. now, and Taggart said that Blackman practiced this week. He said Black, right. Blackman practiced well. <clears throat> but given what Hornibrook did last week in the game, right. before Blackman got hurt, too, what would you do? I think you just, you bottom line, you got to play who you think gives you the best chance of winning the game. And, and if you think, I mean, Blackman's been their starter for a reason. If they believe he's the man, they believe he's healthy. And you want to make the decision without putting any of your players in harm's way. I mean, if you got a wounded guy, you know, you, you got to be careful with that. But if, if, if Blackman's healthy and he thinks he's the man, play him. But based on what you've seen, who, who do you think is the guy that gives them the best chance to win? Well, I don't, I don't watch practice. I don't, I don't sit there and see everything they're doing. That's a real good coach response right there. I'm just telling Let's you. go to the former players, see if they want to take a shot at that. <laughs> yeah, EJ, I mean, what do you got? Again, like Coach said, though, if, if James is healthy enough to go out there and play football, let him play. He's the team starter. He's the team's leader. So it doesn't really have to do with who's better and who's worse as far as actual football play. I think it has to do with the leader. Like, FSU wants to see James out there if he's, if he's healthy enough. Again, 
you know, Coach Tiger's not going to play him if he's out there hobbling or the first couple plays, you know, because he's going to get hit in this game. Yeah. NC State has a great defensive line, and I guarantee you they're going to try to rattle whichever quarterback is in this game. So if James isn't at least 90 percent, I don't think he plays. But, again, sometimes coaches will do this to try to get the other team to prepare for somebody else. Yeah, so to answer your question, I think James is the best option. Mm -hmm. Whether he, he – they there was a co quarterback competition. They went through it. He won. Uh, and, and he's been very productive. He is not the reason that they've lost their games and they haven't looked exceptional in, in, in second halves or finishing games. He's mm -hmm. played very well. Uh, so I, I think there's no doubt that he's the guy. He's their leader. Uh, he's a guy that a lot of guys on that team look up to. But like he said, if he's 60%, 70%, you've got a guy who's done this before. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not some slouch. This is a, a guy who graduated, transferred, uh, from a very successful program in Wisconsin. So I know he knows how to lead a team to victory. So if, if James is hurt, you know, th they need to rest him. But the, the coaches aren't going to put him in a, in a bad situation. They're, they're going to fully protect I mean, let's their Let's think player. about it. You're, you're the head coach. you got people <clears throat> all over you. Everybody's expecting better to this point in, in your tenure in this season. I mean, why would you if, you, if you start Blackman, you believe he's the man. Right. You, yeah. if, I mean, you, you can't just play somebody because I mean bottom line is you got to say well this guy give us the best chance of winning that's who I'm playing and it's based on practice it's based on health it's based on you know maybe maybe Horningbrook over time has gotten better than he was during camp maybe he's maybe he's ready to compete and overtake you know and then you make make may make a decision based on that now yeah. the other thing too I know as a player yeah. sometimes you might feel like you're a little healthier than than you think you are yeah. because you want to get out there you want to play you know, maybe he's thinking about his numbers. He wants to get out there and put up some touchdowns. He also might be thinking about his job. If, if Hornybrook goes out there and has a great a game, yep. you got an FSU team that's already somewhat in limbo. You know, I mean, James, he, he, he wants to play. So if I'm him, if I'm the starter, if I can go out there and play, I'm going to tell Coach Taggart I can go. So, again, you know, sometimes he might be a little more hurt than he thinks he is, and he just wants to go out there and keep his job. I mean, it's human nature for any athlete, any competitor. You want to be out there on the field. So you, you're right, you kind of trick yourself and be like, yeah. I can go do it. Uh, but Cam Akers is a guy that's going to be important in this game, too. The quarterbacks were critical, but Akers top 10 in the country in terms of yards per game in FBS. Is he going to be able to get off and get some yards here? Because NC State's got a great defensive front, as you guys already mentioned. They absolutely do. And I, I think kind of a key to success for, for NC State is to stop that guy, which gotcha. is a lot easier for us to sit here and talk about it and say to do it than actually doing. He's a guy that they're going to split out receiver, motion all over the place, get him involved in, in the screen game, and even take some direct snaps. He is a guy who, who they're going to want the ball in his hands as much as they can, 30-plus times a game. So if you can stop that, then you have a great chance to win. I don't know if they're going to be up to the task when you look and see how they've responded. They played West Virginia. West Virginia had a great plan and really got the ball to their playmakers. If they, if that defense shows up and Big Merch and, and those other guys, Ingram, Ingle, don't come to play, then Cam Makers is going to have a field day. Yeah, and on the opposite side, Florida State's d line is going to have to play just as good as they did last week, if not better. Because NC State has three running backs. Yeah. Bam Knight, I think Person, yeah. and then Houston. Mm -hmm. All three of those guys can go. And then you add McKay, who can take off and run, too. Mm -hmm. So the run defense for Florida State is going to have to tighten up tonight for sure. Big, what, what's his name, Wilson? Big Wilson. He's Big Marv. Big Marvin Big Wilson. Marv. Yes, 21. <laughs> Big Marv. 21. He, he, looks, he, looks a little, he looks a little heavy, but he, he plays really heavy. No doubt. He's, he, he's, a, he's a baller. Yeah. Ten tackles last week in one game. For a D tackle. Three and a half tackles for loss. Two sacks, a fumble recovery. Great game. It's a one-man wrecking, wrecking crew. And he's going to have to do it again tonight. He's going to do it. And he's a guy that gives them energy, though, Coach. I think There's we no saw doubt. this all throughout the game, especially in the fourth quarter. He makes a big play. I love he it. gets up. He's losing his mind. And you I just see it. everybody attracted to that energy and makes him play better. So really look forward to that tonight. All right, we'll see about that in just a few minutes here. Tallahassee getting ready to get things going. Willie Taggart's crew needs a win, as we were talking about. OV and Tim Hasselbeck. And couple coaches exchanging pleasantries for the game. Taggart, Dorn, as mentioned, Dorn's won the last two games against this FSU club. Let's we'll see if they can make it three straight on the road here. We also wonder what kind of environment they'll be playing in. And there's Coach's big buddy. Marvin. Big Marv. That's a Marvin. big Marvin hey, Williams. Coach, he don't look heavy to me right there. No, he man. looks that's, good right that's there. That's your beast right there, baby. <laughs> he ain't heavy. He's my brother. <laughs> that's a beast. We'll be back in just a minute here. Kickoff just under six minutes from Tallahassee. Coming up tonight, it's more of us, 10.30 p.m. Eastern, all ACC after this one wraps up in Tallahassee, North Carolina State against Florida State. 
Final thoughts here, fellas. Uh, Emac, I'll open it up to you. What are you watching early on in this game? North Carolina State's first ACC game. Florida State's one on one. It's a big game. Yeah, it absolutely is. I need McKay to throw the ball downfield effectively. He's averaging right about five, six, six yards a completion. Need him to stretch the field to open up that run game. Because if you can just load up the box, it's going to be a long night for it, NC State. Florida State has a ton of momentum coming into, into this game. You beat Louisville last week. You're back at home. Hopefully some more fans are starting to show up a little bit, starting to believe into the program. There were about 24 there last year, last week. Well, look, if they can have some success early, those fans will be locked in, and that's going to help Florida State beat NC State if they get that chance. So uh, Florida State's going to have to get off to a fast start. They normally do, but play first and second half the same way. If they don't, will those fans flip on them? Oh, yeah. Of course. I mean, yeah, Absolutely. you might start it's hearing some there. boo birds, and I mean... It could go one of two ways. So they need, to, really they need to start fast. They That's your really key. bad. Right. They just need to start fast. Coach? Uh, I'll tell you what. It's just when you start talking about fans and are they there, are they not there, I'll say something about the Florida State fans. They usually get there. Don't go by a kickoff. All right, pan, pan it about midway through the first quarter. Because they're, well, they they're later last on. week, Coach, and it still was empty. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is the Miami <laughs> Heat crowd. These people didn't show up. I'm, I'm just try, saying. I'm trying to help It's them. not 86,000 in there right now, so no, they got to go out there Hopefully and there's it. enough that yeah. if they're playing well, yeah. they can create enough I'm noise. <laughs> all you need is, no is 20,000 that really care enough to make enough noise to That's one make quarter of the stadium, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, okay, we'll come back I give to up. breaking down the crowds here at halftime. Is there another? Is there a key, though, thing you're watching the first quarter? What has to happen? I just, I'm, I'm curious to see if Cam can really do it against this defense. I mm -hmm. think he's a great player. I think he's going to get plenty of chances, um, you know, Last year, he spent his whole life uh, running into brick walls. You know, is that going to happen this week, or are they going to continue to give him a little space to get started? And, and that offensive line has done numbers in the run game. You know, still right. getting their quarterback hit a little bit here and there, but right. it's a complete 180 Much turn uh, running the ball. I mean, we saw a clip yesterday of him, Cam Akers, breaking off an 18-yard run before he's even touched. Yeah. Last year, I think his longest run was four yards. So that just goes to tell you how different and, and schematically – uh, the effort that we're seeing on that offensive line. So kudos to those guys for, for doing the thing and letting Akers really be the player that he's expected to be. You know, we talked preseason. He's got to show up, but he's getting frustrated because he's getting hit in the backfield. Now he's getting those touches and being able to be that great player. And also, this is McKay's first trip down to Tallahassee. So that's mm -hmm. why I say if those fans can get loud, they'll make that game much harder for McKay. Third downs will be louder. Communication to your receivers and your running backs will be a little tougher. So I'm also curious to see how McKay comes out and plays because I think he's I think he can be a really good quarterback. Yeah. He's young, but he's going to continue to improve. All right, well, we're going to find out right about now. We'll also find out who starts under center for the Knowles. Will it be Hornybrook? Will it be Blackman? Let's go down to Tallahassee. Tim O'Brien, Dave O'Brien, and Tim Asselback. Well, the Seminoles have tested their fans in these early games. FSU is back home tonight, and they're counting on a test from NC State. The Wolfpack coming back to Tallahassee with a two-game winning streak over FSU, and the three-time national champs cannot afford to slip up this evening. So tensions are high for this ACC matchup. FSU run out tonight. How many in the stands was a big issue last week that the smallest crowd in 36 years pulled off a big win in the end over Louisville. By the way, much cooler here tonight as opposed to the very tough sunshine of a week ago. And Coach Willie Taggart bringing the Knowles onto Bobby Bowden Field at Doe Campbell Stadium. Coach Taggart feeling the heat before that win over Louisville. Well, they gave up a 21 to nothing lead before Alex Hornibrook came off the bench to lead them to the win 35 to 24 that seemed to ease some of the tensions at least to this point here in Tallahassee and NC State playing with a lot of confidence right now three and one starts and tonight they will play their ACC opener here at FSU Back trying to make it three in a row over the Seminoles. Wolfpack, a very young team. They only had 11 scholarship seniors. In fact, only eight are going to play 
or are eligible to play here tonight. So they really rely on youth and so far that has really come through for them. Intercepted by you know who Jalen Ramsey. Bradley Chubb, defensive end. Inside handoff, running to the right now. Then Cook. Brissett throws wide open to the end zone. Touchdown! Deion Sanders has it. It's going to be a touchdown. I think it's Leon Washington time. It's a big hole. Touchdown, Florida State. It's over. For the upset. Touchdown, Wolfpack. Francois has Rudolph. And we welcome you to ACC Network Primetime Football, presented by Geico on a beautiful night in Tallahassee. The NC State Wolfpack traveling to Florida State. Wolfpack looking for their fourth win of the season. Hi, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Dave O'Brien. My partner, Tim Hasselbeck, and Larisha Harris will be joining us in for Katie George this week. You know, the starting quarterback situation is really fascinating for FSU as we come in. James Blackman, with that knee injury suffered last week, it will not prevent him from starting, but Hornibrook is waiting in the wings. He is waiting in the wings. It is amazing, if you're James Blackman, how healthy you are when you're banged up. And your backup played as well as James uh, Alex Hornibrook played a week ago. It really is an interesting situation here because Hornibrook has the experience. He's probably not as physically talented as James Blackman, but he's been instant offense when he's played for this Florida State group. And so it's a tough decision for Willie Taggart going with James Blackman to start this one off. Well, it's a dramatic moment here. Chief Osceola on Renegade to plant the spear. And we are moments away from getting this one underway. And for more on tonight, let's toss it down to Larisha. NC State, such a young yet talented team. They have a tall task ahead of them as they open the ACC slate here at FSU tonight. I spoke with head coach Dave Doran, and he told me that to get prepared for this game, he used the team's lone loss to West Virginia, another road game, as a focal point for growth. That's how the word of the week comes into play. Pride, personal responsibility, and daily excellence. Quarterback Matthew McKay told me pride is about being intentional and doing your job regardless of experience. The coaches say the leaders need to take pride in being vocal, while the players say they must bring the energy. Larissa, thank you very much. NC State has won the toss. They have elected to receive. And some energy in the building tonight. And against Louisville, the attendance at Doe Campbell Stadium hit a 36-year low, just over 46,000 in a stadium where the capacity is almost 80,000. And it is parents and family weekend here in Tallahassee. They're hoping for another boost of energy from that. So getting set for the opening kick. Keon Lassane back to receive for NC State. Under head coach Dave Dorn in his seventh year. Look out for some trick plays tonight because he loves those. He loves to mess with the defense. Matthew McKay is starting quarterback. One of three McKay brothers enrolled in NC State. Two play on the team. His brother Timothy is a true freshman linebacker. The other already has his degree in engineering. And they're looking for bigger plays out of this passing game. He's been fairly efficient, but explosive plays have kind of been missing in this offense and looking for more of that out of McKay. Number three, Emeka Emizi is his favorite wide receiver. Jordan Houston is the long setback with him. And he'll try to bounce out to the right. Got free of a tackler close to the 30-yard line. Taken down by Amari Gaynor eventually. 
But a five yard pickup. NC State has won the last two meetings with FSU. Last year, 47 to 28. That was in Raleigh. So second down and five for the Wolfpack. And a handoff again to the young running back, Houston, trying to wriggle free. Taken down by Taylor. And so he'll gain three yards. You look at Houston, he's one of three backs that NC State feels like they have that are good quality running backs. Houston, probably the guy with the most speed they want to get on the perimeter. Interesting to see him start in this football game. Yeah, using him early on the first two carries. Third down and two. He'll run it again, spinning free, and now takes it. He's driven back across the 30-yard line. That time the Seminoles were ready for him. That was Gaynor and Warner with the double team. And so here comes the punting unit. So he was denied. D.J. Matthews, he can be very dangerous back there inside his 20-yard line. Trenton Gill. Former walk-on won the job of the fall. He's averaging about 47 yards a punt. And let that one bounce and continue to roll as he scoops it up and scampers out. So Florida State to take over the football here. Hornibrook right there wearing number 12. Blackman suffered what was reported to be a sprained MCL and Blackman without a helmet on so it's going to be Hornibrook that's a surprise it's not what the coaches have told us and then pregame we saw James Blackman running around the field he looked fairly healthy but you look at the numbers for Hornibrook 15 to 20 he was outstanding a week ago and the crowd responding to him in the lineup well he was terrific coming off the bench after Blackman was injured last weekend, he's going to throw it the left-hander and complete it the 20-yard line. That one caught by Terry. And a pickup of nine. That's a good start for Hornybrook. Is it, you see him here. Let's go over this ball and gets drilled in the pocket. But the ball right to the face mask of Terry. That's what you want out of your quarterback. Akers with the handoff, finding a little bit of room. He'll pick up the first before he's tripped up by Moorhead. Akers, the ACC's leading rusher. He's getting about 125 yards per game. They want to get him at least 25 catches or touches. He's trying to bounce here. But knocked down on his second carry. You know, Akers, you said 25 touches. That's what they want to get him. They feel he's their best offensive player. He's a guy that just falls forward. And if you're going to run this up-tempo offense, it's important to be productive in the running game. Incomplete by Hornibrook. Intended for Akers. Terry out there on the sideline. You know, they go up tempo with this offense. Just a miscommunication there with Terry. He stops on the route. Hornibrook throws a go. Part of what happens when you're playing a new quarterback. Quick hitter here to McKinney, the tight end. Eventually stopped by Devon Graves. But a pickup of eight brings up fourth down and two. So a stop here for the Wolfpack. And Tommy Martin into punt. NC State playing their first conference game of 2019 in the ACC's Atlantic Division. And a high long punt. Thomas will take it. Thomas needing a block taken down right at the 20. Just getting started. No score in Tallahassee. ESPN, home of the college football playoff. NC State with their second drive here in the first quarter. 
ACC Network primetime football. Nice of you to join us. Wolfpack trying to win for the fourth time in the early going. Fumble, but they got that one back. Person, the running back, pounced on it. Really a fortunate break here. It is a fumble snap. NC State is in an unbalanced formation. Looked like something might be up with a little RPO action. This handles the snap. Fortunate it bounces up to Person. They pick up two. Into the flat. That one completed to Hines, and eventually Taylor got to him, and got to him very quickly. So they lose two on that tip. And it's Taylor's third tackle of the night already. Looks like he came to play. You know, these throws out to the perimeter, they're basically extensions of the run game. Try to get the defensive line to run, try to wear them out. But if guys on the perimeter, like your corners and your safeties, will tackle such a huge advantage to your defense. From the 20-yard line, big call right away here. Third and 10 for NC State. And McKay from the gun. He fires a wobbly pass and incomplete. Trying to find Thomas. He was covered well by Asante Samuel. Florida State did what we expect them to do on third down. Third and long play, a lot of man-to-man -man coverage. They brought a blitz, fair amount of contact, but no call. And pretty good start for this Florida State defense. We've talked about, you know, how many snaps they play each and every week. You know, two quick three and outs for them. So Matthews back for the punt and he's going to take it at the 31 and drag down at the 40 and so Alex Hornerberg who had a really solid career at Wisconsin left-handed quarterback made a lot of starts 26 and 6 as a starter and the Orange Bowl he was named the most valuable player you said it he Really had a great career at Wisconsin, and obviously he's looking for a change of scenery. Ends up here at Florida State. So I think some people question the fit in this offense based on what we saw him do at Wisconsin. But so far, when he's played for Florida State, he's been outstanding. Gets another opportunity tonight. Akers finds a gap and upended out close to the 50-yard line. Stopped by Jarius Woodhead. And a game of seven. Akers, a guy they like to throw to as well, flag down. And we're talking about how good Hornerbrook has been when given the opportunity. The legal formation offense. Five players in the backfield, five yard penalty, second down. You know, he was going to play in that game last week regardless, and he did get in early. Played a lot more with the injury, of course, to James Blackman than anticipated. In fact, made his mother, Don, tear up watching from the stands. She was so proud of him. She said that was a special moment, a big moment, and he came through with flying colors. Back to throw again. Steps up in the pocket. Got that one free. It's Terry across the 50. Chris Ingram with the tackle after seven. It's good poise in the pocket by Hornibrook as he's looking to his left, doesn't like it, hits the underneath route to Terry, who's coming right into his line of vision. And I just think there's a calm to his game. We talked about his experience at Wisconsin. He already seems comfortable in this FSU offense. Now the whistle here with 9.06 to go in the first. Florida State at two and two, one and one in the ACC. This is the ACC opener for the Wolfpack. Pulling on the field as the runner is down before the line of game, third down. The clock will start on my signal. So it'll be third and one. And just what—that's a big deal when you're in a tempo offense because you want to, you know, surprise the defense with something. Now, you know, you get a defensive play call in if you're NC State because of the stoppage in play. They want to go fast. FSU is actually last in the country in time of possession. Of course, Akers will get it. And up to the 45. 
as he picks up the first down. And they're going to get it and go. Because again, the left side trying to move that pile, stopped by Murchison. Now, Kendall Bryles, the offensive coordinator for Florida State, very happy with the scoring. Early in games, they have been almost unstoppable. That one dumped to Akers, finding room to the outside. Got free of one tackle. He picks up eight. Only Alabama and Texas have more plays of plus 10 yards coming into this Saturday. And you just look at the way that how quickly that the play is coming in. We're just inside 30 seconds on the play clock and everybody's set ready to snap the football. On the screen. Harrison. And keep on moving it. They pick up the first down. Now FSU has had plenty of late game issues but not in the first quarter where they've scored 56 points tops in the ACC number four in the country play action man coming got it loose and complete outstanding play tough catch that's Keith Gavin to haul it in for 11 so, somewhat fortunate here he doesn't see the corner pressure and I don't know that I would advise making throws like that, but he obviously gets away with that one to Gavin. Not a quick hitter, and they're making a living on those here early on. That's McKinney, the tight end. I mean, this is just crazy. He's getting wrapped up. Just as he's throwing kind of across his body as he's going down. You know, fortunate, because there's no way he could see the front side of that play. But sometimes, sometimes you're just lucky, Dave. Yes. Sometimes it's better to be lucky. Akers stopped, brings up third and five. Fast and furious, the Seminoles on offense. Third and five and a man down here for the Wolfpack. And we'll be back in just a moment and ID that player for NC State. ACC Network Primetime Football is presented by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Well, Florida State driving it. 10th play of the drive, forthcoming. Looks like they have an improved crowd here from last weekend. No question about that. Oh, it's a great turnout for this crowd and great response to Alex Hornibrook when he came out in the starting lineup. Murchison looks like he's okay, the injured Wolfpack player. Akers getting a lot of work running and receiving on this drive. One of it trying to keep it, trying to spin across the 20 yard line. Stopped by Peyton Wilson. So, fourth down, what do they do? It's like they're second, sending on the kicking unit, and I think it's probably the right decision. You know, you're, you're a team that has started fast all season long. You're in the red zone. Go ahead, take some points. Even though Horny Brook has some experience, it is his first start here at Florida State. Ricky Aguayo, who missed three field goals against Louisville last week. This would be from 37 yards to get FSU on the scoreboard here in the first quarter. And that one is up, and it is good. FSU strikes first here tonight, Tallahassee. Florida State plays fast, quick starts, 59 points in the first quarter that leads the ACC. Now, earlier this week, Willie Taggart was talking about he wanted to see fans here in this stadium here tonight. So he was actually pleading, doing quite a bit of that. He was very thankful about the fans who did show up last weekend. Yeah, and last weekend it wasn't a great turnout. They do pull out a win, and it seems like on family weekend, an excellent turnout by this group. 
give you a look at that Monday press conference. Um, they're a well-coached team. They're a good football team. And they're coming to Doe Campbell where we want them. And uh, we got a, a great opportunity, a great challenge for us here at home. Hopefully we see everyone there because they make a difference, especially in Doe Campbell. And I appreciate everyone that was there on Saturday. I hope everyone that was there on Saturday be there this Saturday and then call some of their friends and tell them to come with them. We'll appreciate that. Call some of their friends. Well, I think they did. I, I think you're exactly right. We've been, been making some noise as well. So McKay trying to answer. And on the screen, it's Hines as he dives ahead to the 30. That'll bring up second down, pick up a five yards. Hines, the grad transfer from Wake Forest. They know after the defense for FSU allowed over 1,000 total yards over a couple of weeks, FSU hired Jim Levitt, who was Willie Taggart's defensive coordinator at Oregon, to help work with the defense. And they like how that progress is going. A drop pass. Houston couldn't handle it. And incomplete. You know, when you look at Matthew McKay and throws like that, you, you can see what NC State wants to do. They want to throw the ball out to the perimeter to make this defensive line, this big defensive line for Florida State, run sideline to sideline, want to wear them out. But it only works if you, if you give an accurate throw to the perimeter player. Third and five for the Wolfpack. McKay back to throw. Had some time. Airborne. And a tough catch. Amezi, his favorite receiver, to haul that in before Samuel and Fagan got to him. And this is great offense all the way around. McKay does a good job of staying in the pocket. He gets hit after he throws. And Amezi, I really like his game. He's a big, strong receiver. Goes up and, and attacks the football. Doesn't wait for it to come down to him. Incomplete here. Previously 17 yards on the game. That throw right there, that's the stuff that Matthew McKay needs to get out of his game. That's just a long foul ball. You know, we talked to him, and he said, look, I, I need to give my guys a chance to make a play on the football. I think it's something they believe in here, especially with a guy like Amezi. You're throwing it out of bounds, and no one has a chance for it. We were also told by Des Kitchings that one of the things they want to put in more of is explosive plays, you know, big hitters, those 20 to 30-yard gainers. Van Knight with a stop. Jackson there. Four and a half minutes to go in the first. And third and nine for the Wolfpack. Now the crowd really coming to life here tonight. At Doe Campbell. Making a lot of noise on these third downs. McKay right overs the center, nearly intercepted. Intended for Devin Carter. And in and off the hands of Akeem Dent. And you look at the, the they bring a plush pressure, Florida State does, but he's got an op opportunity to get this first down. The ball's just high and behind on Carter. You know, it seems like Matthew McKay, and I, and I think it's the case for the entire NC State team, talking to Coach Dorn, is that, you know, this is a young group, and you play on the road, and we mentioned the crowd noise, Dave, just to kind of settle down somebody to kind of relax the group a little bit and make a play. So Gill has to punt again. High but not deep. And a fair catch by Matthews. Florida State with the ball back up by three. Well, what a win for Duke last night against Virginia Tech. 45 to 10, taking that one on the road. Gigantic win for the Blue Devils. Virginia fell short today in South Bend. Outscored 21-3 in the second half at Notre Dame. And Clemson barely surviving. Carolina going for the two-point conversion and a one-point loss. I love the decision to go for two by North Carolina. That's right, I love the play call, but the decision was great. Hornibrook is sacked. Down around the five-yard line by Isaiah Moore. 
and Murchison who was injured earlier quickly back in it and a loss of eight. Kalen Labor now in as a running back for Florida State. And trying to run it as he tried to cut back to the right. Stopped by Peyton Wilson, who read that perfectly. Got three of them back. But still third down and 13. Part of it trying to move. It's loose. A fumble. And let's see who has it. They will keep it. You see Hornibrook as he's climbing in the pocket here. He ends up getting you know, somewhat loose with the football. He's taking his right hand off the ball. He's kind of climbing him his way into pressure. You see Isaiah Moore right there. They're fortunate they're able to fall on this one, obviously, when you look at the field position. So FSU will have to punt from their end zone on fourth and 12. Got rid of it quickly. And good field position coming up here for NC State. Mm. So look at that, marking it at the 30. Wednesday mornings on ACC Network, Packer and Durham exclusively talking ACC sports. From football to field hockey, Packer and Durham will cover it all every Monday through Friday, 7 to 10 a.m. here on ACCN and also on the ESPN app. I know that's appointment listening for you for my weekly uh, hit 9.30 on Wednesday. 9.30 Wednesday. Appointment listening. That's when Tim Hasselbeck makes his highly regarded appearance. Bailey Hockman is in at quarterback. And McKay is out as they start this drive to the 30. So the backup is in. He will hand off to Bam Knight. Uh, a tough drive on the right side. Hockman, the backup quarterback, transferred to NC State from FSU, where he redshirted in 2017. But in last year's spring game, he threw for over 200 yards. Yeah, and he played early last week against Ball State. Ended up throwing an interception on a tipped pass, but I thought by and large, he, he played fairly well in that football game. A little surprising to see him, but also Matthew McKay. You know, missed a couple opportunities early. They're not moving the team. They hand off for Bam Knight again. He takes a hit and stopped by the Knowles. And he's shut down by Emmett Rice, the linebacker, for a loss of three. This Florida State defense has come ready to play. You see Robinson, he's playing basically the entire game now with the injury to Kando, who was hurt versus Virginia. But it seems like as they've gotten thinner on this defensive line, they continue to play harder. Third and seven. FSU flying on defense. Holds up 3 nothing with about a minute to play here in the first quarter in Tallahassee. And now, an official whistle. 30-second timeout, NC State. And a 30-second timeout by NC State and Dave Doran. Let's toss it down to Larisha. Well, guys, you were talking about FSU's defense. When we spoke to the defensive coordinator, Harlan Barrett, he told me that one of the messages to his team was don't miss your moment. Their margin of error is slim to none, and he wants to make sure that every guy gets an opportunity so they can't miss their moment. He said during the preseason and also into camp that he emphasized finding the top 22. He wanted to ensure that as many guys, meaning the top 22, were able to take on this task because they know the tempo of their offense. They know that they need to run and they know that they need guys and rotation. Now 59 seconds to go here in the first with FSU up three to nothing. Now one thing that FSU has done a very good job of the last couple of weeks is starting to clean up some of those selfish penalties which they were racking up in the first three weeks and really shooting themselves in the foot. They have cleaned that up. NC State has not been as clean in their performance. 
Third down and seven. Hockman gave way to Hornibrook. And that one's going to be incomplete. Flags everywhere. Pass interference. Defense, number 12. 15-yard penalty, first down. On A.J. Litton. It's a great job by, of Mezzi fighting through contact to the ball. It's not a good throw by Hockman. This ball is left way inside. And if Litton is playing it better, it's just man coverage. If he's playing it better and looks inside, that ball's thrown right to him. That, you know, that, that is your receiver bailing your quarterback out. I think it's one of the reasons these NC State quarterbacks trust Amezi so much. Now, just as we were complimenting them on penalties, not racking those up, they pick up the interference. Hand off to Person, trying to dance through the left side, still on his feet. And up into the pile. On the carry, final seconds of the first quarter. A gain of four. So that will bring up second down and nine. I will say I'm surprised as we're looking at Matthew McKay. Unless it was a, a predetermined move just because of where they got game possession of the football, that they made a move then, still in the first quarter when Matthew McKay has been their starter. And I'll try to bounce outside. Person. And some tough yardage. And getting a little frisky, too. Here are the final seconds of the first quarter. So it's on to the second. Florida State with the three to nothing lead. Not much scoring early on, but the Knowles are out in front here in Tallahassee. Welcome back to ACC Network Primetime Football presented by Geico. Start of the second quarter. And a Wolfpack trying to punch it in. Third and two. He slips and down he goes. Well, Hawkman losing his footing. You know, you have a backup quarterback come into the game. You have him playing under center when you play the majority of your snaps in the shotgun. A short yardage situation. You know, sometimes it's just getting used to it. He gets stepped on by the center. Gibson steps on his right foot as he's trying to come out of there. And, you know, those are the little things that happen when you have your backup quarterback play. It's a shame because they ended up getting the ball on the 30-yard line. Really just sputtered on that drive. Well, this will be Christopher Dunn. Field goal from 29 yards. And he drills it to tie this one up at 3-3 in the early seconds of the second quarter. Yeah, and I can't say that I'm shocked that we have seen Hawkman come into this game because I think Dave Dorn likes to, to give guys opportunities and, and, and certainly feel confident in his depth. They did it a week ago early in the game, as I said, against Ball State. But, you know, not all possessions are created equal. And so after the shanked punt by Florida State and you get the ball on the 30-yard line, you know, I was surprised that we didn't see Matthew McKay Unless it was just a planned thing, and then they felt like, hey, we already told him he's going in. We don't want to right. say, oh, no, 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 the starter's back out there. I think the bigger surprise, frankly, was we had been told that Blackman was going to start. Maybe something happened in the pregame drill with that knee. Just didn't feel like he could go, but Hornibrook came on to start for Florida State. Of course, he was so good a week ago. And you're right, Dave. That is the bigger surprise. There's no question about that. We saw Blackman warming up. I saw him run around the field, didn't seem to have a limp. And even last week when he was injured, it wasn't like he had to be carted off the field. He went and got on the bike, then was walking around, congratulating his team. So you know, we certainly entered in with the expectations that he was going to be the starting quarterback. Alton will take it, fair catch. NC State has been bringing the pressure on Hornerbrook. And they want to be aggressive defensively. That, I think, is what they want their identity to be. You know, they're going to play with a three-man front. They really like their linebackers and their safeties. And so bringing pressure, I think they feel like fits perfectly with their personnel. And so just communicating it for your young defense on the road is important. So far, so good for that group. 
Now, Willie Taggart said last week, you know, he was ready for that moment. The game wasn't too big for him. The moment wasn't too big for him. And nothing there on the attempt by Akers to run to the right. Aleem McNeil with the stop. You see McNeil gets into the backfield right away. You know, talking to Dave Huxtable, he really felt like the defense coordinator for North Carolina State, he really felt like their defensive line matched up extremely well versus this offensive line for Florida State. Second and 11, loss of one. Helton in motion. And he's hit as he releases, but got it away and complete nonetheless. Or was it dropped eventually? That was incomplete. And Hornibrook just holds on to that a little too long. They're trying to run a wide receiver screen. See that little pump fit there? I don't know if he didn't feel comfortable with the throwing lane, but because he was late to it, it allowed the defense to pursue. And so, you know, Griffin on the pressure and then Wilson there to make the play on the receiver. So it'll be third down and 11. Hornibrook again pressure and down he goes to see a sack. Morell Murchison was really bounced back from being nicked up earlier after spending some time down on the field. He's flying now. He has this terrible job of the guys up front. Watch them try to pass this off here as the pressure comes. You don't end up going on the other side. You, your left guard, uh, excuse me, Arnold, is coming across and behind the center. You just never, ever do that. I know that they're inexperienced up front, but that that, that is kind of the rule number one in pass protection. You want to pass it off, not end up coming around the center. So Martin to punt, Thomas back at the 40. Two sports star, also an outstanding baseball player. And that one is loose. And a flag was down way back at about the 12-yard line. And not touched anyway. 12.49 to go here in the second. Legal formation offense. Five players in the backfield at the snap. Five-yard penalty. We play fourth down. And really, that's a, a break because you re-kick ends up being a pretty, you know, good kick by Florida State because, you know, somebody is blocked into there. Thomas, he's not able to field the football, takes a Florida State roll. That's a fortunate break for NC State, but a, a terrible blow for Florida State is they, they really were able to swing the field there. Yeah, so this punt will be from right around the goal line. And by the way, you talk to anyone that plays special teams, Dave, this is the worst time to cover a kick. You just sprinted down the field full speed, and now you got to do it again. Thomas back to receive. And Thomas with the fair catch. Florida State three and NC State three. Murchison has been everywhere. He has been the man defensively so far for the Wolfpack. the game the special operations command parachute team known as the para commandos delivered three flags into the stadium the fsu flag the pow mia flag and the united states flag along with the game ball the para commandos are from mcdill air force base here in florida we'll pack on the attack knight with the carry and he'll pick up five to bring up second down dave hoffman still in the game at quarterback, which is a surprise to me. Seeing Matthew McKay seemed like the team had confidence in Matthew McKay, and you know, see Bailey Hawkman out here is a bit of a surprise. Throw and that one complete to Powell. As they will pick up the first down. Freshman and a real speed guy. So first and ten for the Wolfpack.
And off in a big gainer right up the middle by Bam Knight. Taken down by Fagan, but not before he gained 11. Yeah, and it's a good job of the guys up front. And then look at Angeline Six, the tight end, does a good job of creating a little alley there. Does a nice job on McCray, and Bam hits it hard. Intended for Powell again. But incomplete with 11.42 to go before halftime. And some tempo here out of the NC State offense with Bailey Hockman in the lineup. NC State, by the way, the only school in the country that can boast five alums who are currently playing quarterback in the NFL. And five, five pretty good ones as well. Bam Knight straight ahead. And a football loose. Florida State on the recovery. Cyrus Fagan scoops up the fumble. One of the issues you're going to have with the young backs, I think Emmett Rice is the guy that, that gets this ball out. You see Knight has this football. Emmett Rice, as he gets stood up, kind of gets his helmet in there and rakes at the football. And that's clearly out. Say it was Rice, but it maybe was Briggs, 58, getting his helmet on there, not Emmett, Emmett Rice, who kind of came to the party a little bit after that. Now the Knowles flexing some muscle on the defensive side. So Hornerbrook to take over the offense. Looking to throw, and a low pass, but eventually Harrison brought down. Just look at that. Sorry, Dave, you just look at that play. It's so hard. You got a left-handed quarterback. I think some of these plays, you have to think about how you're going to call them differently. It's an RPO to the right, but you now have a left-handed quarterback, and so to get yourself situated around to make that throw was difficult. Lefty quarterback to fire and incomplete. Off Harrison. So third down and long. Hornerberg, 8 out of 11 for 44 yards so far. And I would expect a pressure from the right here if I was North Carolina State's defense. Third down and 14 for FSU. Got four receivers in the game for the Knowles. So a lot of targets here for the senior quarterback. On the move. They converge on him and they get to him again. Big time pressure. Calvin Hart with the sack. Yeah, and you look at Hornybrook here. He just kind of moves into this pressure. It's a little stunt by the NC State front. And Hornybrook kind of bails out of the pocket rather than just sitting in there and trusting the protection. Tries to escape to his left, which he's clearly more comfortable doing. And he kind of walks his way into that pressure. Loss of 12, forcing a punt by Tommy Martin. Tommy Martin on probation. Taylor Thomas, outstanding outfielder for the Wolfpack baseball team. Drops it, that scoops it up, and now nowhere to go. There's a flag on the play. ACC Network Primetime Football is brought to you by Bojangles Famous Chicken and Biscuits. It's bow time. It is bow time here at FSU. Great to have you with us tonight here in Tallahassee, the home of the three-time national champions, Dave O'Brien alongside Tim Hasselbeck. We're seeing a couple of quarterbacks in the game playing a lot of downs, a lot of minutes that, frankly, we did not expect to see this early in the game. Listen, I have a soft spot for backup quarterbacks, okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm never against seeing some of those guys play. 
But this is a surprise. We thought we would see Alex Hornibrook at some point. Mm -hmm. I don't think we thought we would see Bailey Hawkman this early yeah. or, or maybe or at even all. at all. Right. And so I think it's a surprise. And, um, you know, kind of for Hawkman in a hostile environment, it's a great crowd here tonight. It's been noisy. And so, yeah, that's been a surprise for me. And I think that when you look at Alex Hornibrook, you know, things haven't been as easy as they were last time out for him. Now Hockman continues to play. He'll drop back to throw and fires that one incomplete. That was tipped. Nazrul Dean, who is just outstanding back there at free safety and has 28 tackles already this season out of Concord, North Carolina. And can really hit, too. Second down and 10. Very low scoring. First half here at Doe Campbell. Freshman running back is Houston. He'll get the carry. Look at a bounce toward the edge, but then back inside and gobbled up by Samuel. But a gain of nine. You kind of need to create an opportunity where it's third and manageable. Obviously, third and one here, but. You know, both of these offenses have been dealing with third and, and long or, or third and really long situations like this so much easier to call plays. Third down and one. And the crowd getting loud in Tallahassee. And that's exactly what Willie Taggart was asking for this week in his press conference on Monday. Quarterback will keep that. Hockman and pick up the first down. An NC State offensively, that'll be kind of a call at the line of scrimmage where they, you know, they'll say, hey, look, you're in there. We have a run called. We have a call where you can just go ahead and take the sneak if you think you see a bubble in that defensive line, which is what they did there. Amezi, Hines, and Lassane, the wide receivers in there for NC State. And now joined by Devin Carter. On first and ten for the backup, Hockman. And looking for some help on a block. Can't get free outside. That was Tabari Hines stopped by Levanta Taylor, who's been very active. He's been active. He does a great job of pursuing. That play is really made by Josh Brown who has Kerry Angeline trying to block him on the perimeter. But 51, Josh Brown, the linebacker, he just stands him up, and that's what allowed Romante Taylor to come in and make the tackle. So second and nine. Amezi in motion. Hockman rolling. Gets free. Now dumps that one off to Amezi, and out he goes. That's his favorite wide receiver coming into play tonight. He had made 25 catches. It's a really nice play by Bailey Hockman as he escapes outside the pocket here. When you run move the pocket plays, you want to push the perimeter, which is exactly what he does. He gets Brown to draw into him because he thinks that he's, you know, a threat as a runner. And then he's just able to dump it off to a Messi there with the run after the catch. And enough to pick up the first, first and 10. Hockman. Trying the sideline, and a terrific catch made by Devin Carter. Right along the sideline, and they're into the red zone. It's a great catch, and it's also a great throw. He's just able to get on top of Stanford Samuels. Look at Carter, six foot four. He's able to just go up over the top. Leaves enough room for the quarterback from the sideline. It's a good-looking wide receiver. Nice throw. Great play. Coming into this game, the Wolfpack 19 for 19 in the red zone with 13 touchdowns. Pulling on the field is under further review. I'll see what they're reviewing here on that catch along the sideline. I'm with you, Dave. It looks like he catches his football. Plenty of room from the sideline. They're looking at. He's got it there. What do you think? I have no idea, to be honest with you. I mean, 
It's a routine reception. Well, he stands up and probably handed it to the official. Well, I guess they're checking the spot now. That's what they're looking for. I mean, look, I understand it, but it, but he caught the ball. There is no review on the play. The play ended at the six-yard line. We will remove the ball, put it at the six-yard line. So they moved to the six-yard line from the five-yard line. He's down there. I mean, it looks like he's maybe the seven-yard line. To be honest with you, though, I mean, you could do that on every single play. Sure. Especially on run plays inside. I don't think you need to stop the game for that. So first and goal from the six. Goes back on the move. Not much there as Robinson met person. And really just a slow developing run play and Robinson comes off, you know, the edge here. You know, when he's unblocked, it's just kind of a, a misdirection run play, but Robinson able to run it down from behind. I've seen that a couple times now, you know, where, where these slow developing run plays are able to be chased down from behind. It's a nice job by Robinson. Second and goal. After a loss of three. And incomplete. He wanted person, but a misfire. You know, it's interesting. You have that huge play, you know, the big play on the go route to Carter, and then they stop the game. You know, in NC State, much like Florida State, likes tempo. And, you know, that's why I didn't like the official stopping it for, for maybe a yard in terms of where it was spotted. You get your offense out of a, of a rhythm if you want to go fast. Now, like you say, you could do that on virtually every play. Third down and goal. At the nine-yard line of the Seminoles. And whistles before the snap. Timeout, NC State. So Dave Doran takes a timeout. We'll be back in just a moment. Back in Tallahassee, and the Wolfpack of NC State knocking on the door. It's third down and nine. Now let's see if they put it in the air. Hockman, the backup quarterback, major story here in the first half. He's played most of the snaps. Hockman from the gun to the end zone. Incomplete. And no flags on the play. Coverage by Cyrus Fagan. And Bailey Hawkman is going to want this one back. Ricky Persman is in the backfield, and he's just going to leak out here as Angeline goes to the corner. Well, look at the fullback person, or the halfback person. He's wide open. He's uncovered. You just throw him the football, he'll end up walking into the end zone. It seemed like Bailey Hawkman, who knew he had pressure on that play, didn't you know, look at the, the entire picture, ends up trying to force the corner out. This will be done from 26. And that is good. So NC State with a 6-3 lead, 6.25 to go before halftime. You know, Dave Dorn talking to Hawkman coming off the field there saying, hey, listen, we had a tight end. If you hit Ricky Person in the flat, they blitz the protection, but they don't cover Person who's running into the flat. And I think Dave Dorn is saying, okay, hey, talk to me. I know you haven't played a ton, but what did you see? Because we left some points on the uh, off the board there that we, we should have had. And Angeline, a very big target at 6'7". Yeah, Dave, I think it's a great point. You have a six foot seven tight end that, that's had success in the red zone already this year. As a quarterback, you're kind of thinking, okay, hey, my big target. But that's why you have to read it out if you're the quarterback because your halfback in the flat was a walk in. How surprised are you right now that it's a 6 3 game? I think, you know, looking at these offenses, particularly how they've both been quick starters. We expected a lot more points. And we've seen Florida State before, and we've seen them start fast before. And we we know the talent that they have on the perimeter and the 
the quality of back they have in Cam Akers and the fact that this is a young NC State defense that, you know, didn't play great on the road when they went to West Virginia. So I think this is really surprising. 6.25 to go here in the second quarter at Doe Campbell. Well, the defenses have been really good. NC State, seven tackles for loss and four sacks. We'll see if Cam Akers really starts to rock and roll. They want to get him at least 25 touches per game. Still on his feet and breaking free is Wilson, Pokey Wilson, with a 17-yard pickup. It's a good aware play by Wilson. As you see, as he spun down here, I think he's sitting on top of Smith. Good awareness. Mm. Got to get back up and run. A man down for NC State. And that is Tayshawn Smith, left cornerback, sophomore out of Fort Lauderdale. Which would be a really tough blow for this NC State defense. Nick McLeod has been the starter at corner. Well, he was injured a week ago. And so they've been playing Keyshawn Miller, Tayshawn Smith in his place. And I think that's one of the areas where Dave Dorn felt like his team, you know, as you, as you see Wilson just lands on top of him. You know, Dave Dorn is recognizing the talent and the speed of these Florida State wide receivers. And so he's playing some of these younger, inexperienced corners, you know, not knowing for sure, you know, how they would match up with them. And so, you know, an injury to Smith certainly doesn't help that any for NC State. Yeah, they are very much aware that even though NC State won the game last year and won it 47 to 28, several of the Florida State wideouts had career days. You know, DJ Matthews. 133 yards and Terry with 142 yards those were career highs against the Wolfpack. That's why it's so critical Dave you, you talking about you know the pressures and hits on the quarterback so far by this front of NC State you know to do that to protect these guys and that's what Dave Huxtable the defensive coordinator for NC State you know really was talking about was trying to protect the younger corners that are playing in place of Nick McLeod. So NC State by three with 6.14 to go in the second quarter. First down and 10. James Blackman, the number one quarterback for the Seminoles, has not played it down in this one. This is going to be ripped off for a big game by Helton. Very simple play, but he's going to gain 13. It's essentially a sweep. You look at the right tackle, Roberts. He just releases and does a good job of just getting enough of more. And Helton, you see his speed when he gets on the perimeter. Outstanding once the ball is in his hands. Akers trying to bounce outside. They converge on him to bring up second down. Murchison with another tackle. Just 19 yards so far for Akers. Second and nine for the Knowles. Pressure. Dumps it off incomplete. He's getting a lot of that tonight. Ingram came. In the right corner, the junior from Salisbury, North Carolina. And Hornibrook, for the second time, doesn't see the corner pressure. Here it comes from over here. And watch Hornibrook as he is trying to sell, you know, the screen here. He doesn't recognize it. And so if he would have seen it earlier, he could have drifted, given ground. But because he saw it late, it ended up affecting the throw. Third down. Hornibrook at Wisconsin started 32 of the 35 games he played in. Quick throw and a quick hit. Terry, Terry, touchdown. 44 yards.
And that's the speed we're talking about with these Florida State wide receivers. Tamaria Terry, Scary Terry, as they like to call him, just runs a slant. And, you know, if you're Dave Dorn and you're a man coverage and you think, well, shoot, Chris Ingram is our best corner on the field right now. He can maybe make that tackle. But just Hornybrook able to keep him on the move, and then you saw the speed into the end zone. Scary Terry indeed lights it up, but it'll be blocked. Peyton Wilson, he got his hand on it to deny the point after. So Florida State with a 9-6 lead. We've seen these block, block extra points become factors in, in football games. Wilson's a guy that they really like, gives great effort. He's a young player. They think he's going to be great. But that comes after this. Tamari and Terry on the slant. Tanner Engel, who's a really good player at free safety, doesn't take the right angle. And it's why it's so important as a quarterback to keep the speed of the wide receiver up when he's running an in-breaking route. It's a flag down here. Flag came late. Four fifty-nine to go before halftime. I think they may be getting Peyton Wilson on. Yeah, they're going to kick this again. Or maybe some. Yeah, I, th I think potentially leaping on Peyton Wilson. You saw him, you know, get so free there. I think he jumped over. Run. Hurled over, so count the extra point, and that will make it 10 to 6. Yeah, as you see Wilson here you know, using his arms to jump over the offensive lineman. Armstrong kind of leverages over him, and you can't do that. Rules really in place to protect. You know, the, the defenders from going up and getting flipped over. But. Impressive nonetheless, though, because Armstrong is 6'4", 325. Well, said, it is an athletic play. Wilson is no doubt athletic. Really, we, we used to see Bobby Wagner, the Seattle Seahawks, do that. You know, it was kind of you would run and you would jump over the guy. And you know, they kind of eliminated it to protect the players. The officials end up getting that one right. And, you know, certainly a better way to cap that drive off by Florida State. And so you see what I was talking about, that speed of the wide receivers. And I think that, you know, Dave Doran, I think that was his biggest concern, you know, with the youth of his team, but the speed of the wide receivers and how his guys match up, I think is the thing he's got to try to, to deal with the most in terms of facing this Florida State offense. I think his quote exactly was, I'm concerned with the speed of the wide receivers, not how the speed of how quickly they snap the football. So the re-kick of the PAT makes it 10-6. And now we'll see how his young quarterback performs, the 6'2", 210-pounder, Bailey Hoffman. Matthew McKay, the sophomore, the starter, did start the ball game, but didn't last very long. So under five minutes to go here before the half and a fair catch. Now Bailey Hawkman, who transferred to NC State from Florida State. So far, four out of eight, no touchdowns and no interceptions. And I've just been surprised that we've seen him, Dave. I mean, I don't know that Matthew McKay had, had played in a way that made me feel like they needed something else in their offense to get him jump started. And right. we see the numbers there. It's not like Hawkman has jump started this offense. Almost as if they were hoping for a surprise element that has not been delivered, not yet. Jordan Houston to back with him, but he is back to throw. And on the screen, nobody there to block. And no gain. Cyrus Fagan, strong safety, came up to say hello. And that will bring up second down.
Hockman with the handoff. Houston finds a big hole on that left side. He'll pick up the first down. Boy, he is a tough runner. Got a good block, too. He got a great block. It's a good job of the guys up front of getting movement. They, they bring Fed Jackson around the puller. There's a little kick out. Witt as well. And then Houston's the guy they feel like has a lot of speed. They think he's a good perimeter player, but has been running the ball well inside the tackles. Gained 15, but a man down. 427 on the clock. It may be Taylor. As FSU is out to attend to Levante Taylor, who's had a really, really impressive first half. He really has. He's been flying around. And, you know, you look at this Florida State defense, they really have been, you know, been banged up the last few weeks. You know, Jaden Lars would be. They lost last week. The week prior to that, Joshua Kando goes out. And, um, you know, I just think that. You know, when you have a defense that's trying to come together and you have a defense that's been playing as many snaps as these def this, this defense has been playing, you know, the injuries just seem to be stacking up on them. Losing Taylor would be a big blow. And Willie Taggart told us this week that they've worked hard on trying to eliminate the penalties, particularly on the defensive side, the selfish penalties, which have really hurt them in the early going. And Harlan Barnett, the defensive coordinator, said, what we're trying to teach these guys is if an opponent shoves you, you don't need to shove him back. Get his number, remember it, have a good memory, and then get him legally. <laughs> I think that's pretty good advice. Yes. Whether you're Florida State's defense or anybody's. First down and 10. Now Taylor into the tent. Hockman from the gun. Watch the throw. Right over the middle and complete to Thayer Thomas for 15. And that's good timing and good ball location by Hockman. You know, when you have a receiver going to the middle field, don't make him reach. Hit him right between the eight and the seven like he does there. Hockman looking like he's getting a little bit more comfortable, but that one is incomplete. Samuel came very quickly from that corner. Yeah, and you see Asante Samuel Jr. He just jumps this running the hitch. Carter kind of slow off the line of scrimmage. Samuel's reading back into the backfield, seeing Hawkman. And you have to think now, if you're NC State, you know Samuel's an aggressive player. Not be surprised to see them test him double move or just trying to run by him at some point. Second down, 10. And a flag down. Ball start, offense. Number 67. Five-yard penalty, second down. So that will back it up for the Wolfpack. Coming up in a four-minute mark. And right at the 50. Second down, 15. Hockman from the pocket and complete. Tough catch. That was Thomas paying the price after the reception. In a five. Thomas, multi talented. We talked about his baseball skills. He was drafted by the Boston Red Sox this year. Very good outfielder. And he's thrown a touchdown pass this season. He's a very good athlete and has a great feel playing inside. Surprising that he's not out there on third and ten. Jabari Hines is. Pressure on him, but complete. Hines on the move. And a flag is down. With 317 left in the half. There is no foul to play, fourth down. That's happened a couple of times here in the first half where a flag was thrown, but there was no penalty. And I think what was happening there is that was a shallow cross screen. So basically, Huckman knows he's throwing a shallow cross, and the, the rest of the receivers, they release down the field to go block. I think there was maybe an initial feeling that Angeline maybe 
initiated his block before the reception was made. I think it was the right call to pick up the flag. Fourth and one. From the 36. And the handoff person trying that right side, but he is shut down. Nowhere for Ricky Person to run. Another big stop by the Knowles defensively. Boy, as a unit, they have been very impressive, Tim. They've been great, especially the guys up front. And I believe that's Marvin Wilson right there, the big defensive lineman. Just look at the push that he gets. Fed Jackson's a good player, but he just plays on their side of the line of scrimmage. Not only does he cause that penetration to string the play out, but he ends up slipping off and making the tackle and celebrate, big fella. That's a good play. Yes, Marvin Wilson, guy who's really redefined his body. He's a team captain. Harlan says that he thinks he's sexy now with this new body of his. They can think he's a lot of things if he'll make plays like that on fourth down. No, sure. Hard to with time. Thompson short but incomplete. There is a flag. And it will be holding. Holding. Offense. Number 75. 10-yard penalty. First down. On Bello, the left tackle. The senior from Nigeria. 245 left in the half. And Florida State looking to add on on top 10 6 over the Wolfpack, who have beaten them two straight times. So first and 20. He'll throw on the slant and complete to Terry, taken down by Chris Ingram. But a gain of nine. Saw Terry on the touchdown, saw Terry again on the slant. If I'm Kendall Bryles, if I'm Alex Hornibrook, I want to come back to that as much as possible. Now they lined up offside. Encroachment offense, number seven, lined up in the neutral zone. Five-yard penalty, uh, second down. D.J. Matthews, the wide receiver. So FSU going backwards again. And that'll bring up second down and 15 for Florida State. Book has played the entire first half. He'll keep moving to his left at the 30, and he'll flip that one out. Good pressure by Murchison. Who has had an outstanding first half despite going down briefly with an injury. He's come back with a vengeance. So a third down and 15. For Hornibrook and FSU. Under two minutes to go in a half. And I think we can Hornibrook's got to work something to his left. There's so much rotation of the coverage to Terry. Steps up in the pocket. Rifles it over to center, but that's going to be dropped. Trying to hit Terry right there in midfield. There is a flag down. Penalty, first down. See Hornibrook actually does a nice job climbing in the pocket there. You see the late hit, the shove in the back, but lies. And really Terry is kind of getting doubled. They're rolling coverage over the top of him. And, and so his, he breaks that off and comes to the middle. He's there for a big play. Could have seen another catch and run opportunity for him. A late hit. First and ten. Plenty of time to throw. Batted down. Incomplete. Right into Peyton Wilson. That's such a dangerous throw and not one that you can make. Terry's just running the slant. And Hornibrook is so late that you, you just can't force that in there. He's fortunate that Peyton Wilson wasn't able to tip that ball off and pick it off. Second down 10. With the ball on the 48. 
Akers back in there. And a timeout. Timeout, NC State. To be a 30 second timeout. So Dave Doran has used all of his. 142 to go. In a low scoring first half. Two teams that have been piling up the offense this season, but not tonight to this that point. That is NC State's final time out of the half. Quarterback play has been so fascinating. We talked about the starting guys who have played no role in this at all so far tonight, Tim. And that's been shocking because, you know, I don't think that in our preparation we saw two teams that were being held back by their quarterback. And so to make a change obviously seems like each coach is, is trying to do something to spark his offense to get it going. And, you know, here we are with the 10-6 ball game. It hasn't exactly worked that way. No, not exactly as they had hoped. You wonder sometimes there's an element of surprise in there that, you know, hopeful that, a guy they really haven't prepped that much for is going to make an impact, but uh, that clearly has not worked. No, that has not been the case. And I think the other aspect of it is when, you know, you know, I think we are seeing two defenses that have a lot of talent on them, and I think both groups are probably playing a little bit better than they have played in previous weeks. So it'll be second down and 10 here with the football on the 48-yard line for Hornibrook. And the Knowles trying to win again here at home on a handoff. Akers busted through the initial tackle and taken down by Asus to present third and nine. Now last week he was so accurate. Hornibrook was 15 out of 2,255 yards, two touchdowns, and he was not intercepted. And the comeback win. Flags down and batted away. Incomplete. Got a flag on the play. See if this is an illegal formation. With 104 to go in the first half. And Florida State on top, 10 to 6. NC State coming in 3 and 1. This is their ACC opener. Lost to West Virginia on the road. But wins over East Carolina, Western Carolina, and Ball State. Akers is applauding here. During the play, illegal formation offense, five players in the backfield, five-yard penalty, third down. After the play is over, dead ball, unnecessary roughness, defense, number 10, 15-yard penalty, first down. That's on Tanner Engel. The hard-hitting free safety for NC State. Oh, and that's clearly a late hit, unnecessary, and... And that's a terrible penalty. I mean, you think most successful two-minute drives are aided by either a quarterback run or a penalty, and there's a penalty for Florida State to, to help assist this drive. Back to throw. Throwing long, has a receiver open, and a touchdown, Wilson. 39 yards for the strike. It's a phenomenal route by Wilson. He runs a slant and go, and it's a good ball by Alex Hornibrook. And they are attacking Palmer, number six, the corner who is now in the game because of the injuries to Nick McLeod last week and, and Tayshawn Smith earlier in this game. Wide open the point after, and he drills that to put FSU in front, 17 to six over the Wolfpack. We take a look at our New York Life drive recap. Well, here's Wilson at the top of the screen. Look how wide his split is. He's going to run a slant and go, and he's doing it on really a third string corner. That's what he's looking at here. There's the slant. He bites it, gets on the top, 
And then it's just a good job of Hornibrook of making sure that he gives his wide receiver a chance to make a play on the football. Outstanding route. Good job getting in and out of your break and just way too much speed for Palmer. Loki Wilson into the end zone. And you're talking about how penalties so often influence these drives in the last couple of minutes. And I think you have that penalty, Dave. You know, it's 15 yards. And then it kind of puts you right on, you know, the pot plus side of the 50 yard line. And most play callers, once they get to that kind of plus 45 range, they feel confident in calling a shot play because of the field position. And Kendall Bryles certainly dialed it up. So the last minute of play before the break. And a festive atmosphere here in Tallahassee. As Florida State leads it 17 to 6 on a 39 yard touchdown pass to Pokey Wilson. <laughs> Give me a look at Blackman's reaction on this one. A man who did not start, we thought he probably would, but. Getting in there for the congratulations on Pokey Wilson. And that's great. It's one of the reasons he has the C on his jersey. He's captain. He was hurt last year. And, and one of the things the team really liked about his leadership was how upbeat he was all last year while he was dealing with that injury. And yeah, he's an incredibly popular guy in this team. And he should be when you handle an injury the way he's handled an injury, when you handle this situation the way that he appears to be handling this situation. I think that guys on your team will respect that because he has the injured knee maybe he tweaked that in the pregame he's a guy who threw four touchdown passes against NC State last year and off to person across the 30 taken down by Nasrul Dean but that was an eight yard pickup second down two Hockman to throw and complete got his tight end Angeline and picks up the first down with a 16 yard pass. It's a really nice pass kind of a, a good throw after the drive starter on the run and you know really the only thing that could you know hamper this drive is remember no timeouts because they called him earlier one on defense and, and two earlier on offense. Hockman time throwing deep. Look at the left side. And it is caught. And that was Amezi with a spectacular catch. To me, it originally looked like he comes down with this. I, I thought that Den had a chance to maybe intercept this. Now, look, ball looks like it kind of bounces on the ground there. Oh, now they're going to call it incomplete. And I think that's the right call. It's a good job of a Mecki, a Mezzi going up and fighting for the football because, you know, Akeem Dent is rotated over to that side, and it really looked like he had an opportunity to intercept that football. Oh, they're going to review it now. So this play will be under review. And did he come down in bounds? Been ruled on the field incomplete. And I think we see that ball bounce there, Dave, you know, as he's coming down with it. And Amezi's coming down basically the same time that the ball is coming down and uh, dribbles it off the turf here, real quick. As you said, they have no more timeouts left. This is a huge review here on an incomplete pass. You know, and because of the fact that you don't have the timeouts, you know, with 30 seconds, you know, what, what can you get off if you keep the the ball, you know, inbounds? And obviously, the clock will stop quickly for a, you know, for a first down. But you know, can you run a play quickly after getting a first down? Maybe give yourself an opportunity, at least attempt a field goal. You know, and from there, if if they overturn this, that's 34 yards. That field goal attempt. 30 seconds to go. Are you seeing it the way I am, though? I mean, to me, I, yes. I feel like that ball is loose. 
They are going to call that I think incomplete because of that reason Tim. After further review the ruling on the field stands second down. So the play stands. Now the advantage to NC State even though they didn't get the benefit of the call there is you've had a stoppage of play. So maybe you call two plays now at this point because you've had the time to communicate to your offense. From the 49. Second down 10. Hockman wants to throw again. From the pocket, over it and nearly intercepted. Well, Fagan had a golden opportunity and he knows it. Fagan had a golden opportunity and so did Hines. Number five, the receiver coming across the formation. He's wide open. Great pass protection by NC State. Hawkman's just got to be able to pull that ball, you know, down, drive it down into the chest of, of Hines, and he, he maybe catches it, Dave, and is able to run out of bounds. Third down, 10. 25 seconds left in the second quarter. Hawkman to gun it again, and this one is complete to Hines. Right at the 40-yard line as they pick up the first. And a player is down. A couple of men, in fact, are down for FSU. Slow to get up. Robinson and Durden. And now Durden is going to take a seat with 20 seconds left. And coming up on the ACC Network halftime report, Dalek Cuff, Eric McLean. Mark Richt and E.J. Manuel have those stories you want to see about North Carolina and that tremendous effort against Clemson today, Virginia with costly turnovers, and Wake Forest remaining undefeated, now 5-0. It's really incredible what Wake Forest has done. They're getting great quarterback play, and Dave Clawson's done a tremendous job with that group. It seems like they just have continued to get better each year you know, while he's been that coach. Clock will start on my signal. Doing coming up 6'5, 305 pounds from Newberry, Florida. And for all intents and purposes, Dave, that's a timeout for this NC State offense. Yes. On a warm night. Comes in handy. NC State is without any more timeouts. Hockman from the shotgun. Looking, firing. And incomplete intended for Thomas. And 10 seconds to go. And the way Florida State is playing, they're playing a cover two. They're playing their safeties wide. Hitting that corner is going to be hard. The middle of the field is going to be open. The question is, with 10 seconds, do you feel comfortable throwing the ball in the middle of the field, declaring yourself down, and trying to spike the football? Hockman stepping up, got free, has time to survey, stops at the 40 in a short pass as Carter steps out with one second to go before halftime. That's an awesome play by Devin Carter. I mean, when your quarterback is scrambling, he's in trouble. Work for your quarterback. Carter does that. He's right on the sideline, aware of the situation, catches the football and gets out of bounds. That's a great play by a redshirt freshman wide receiver. Opportunity for the field goal. Christopher Dunn. This would be from 42 yards for the Wolfpack. And it is off the post. Off the upright. He cannot hit it. And that's how the first half comes to an end. Just when you think they're about to cap off an impressive drive you started on their own 28 25 yard line 58 seconds left no timeouts give your team an opportunity good snap good hold and a little too far left let's go to Larisha with Willie Taggart Alex Hornerbrook had that 39 yard TD before the half how impressed are you with his execution well I'm, 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 I'm impressed but uh, that's what we expect out of Alex Alex does a great job preparing he, He's, he's worked hard for it, and we expect him to execute when he's out there. James Blackman has not been in the game, did not start. Will we see him tonight? 
Well, no, not unless we unless we need him, we won't see him. Thank you so much, Coach. Thank you very much. All right, so at halftime, it's Florida State on top of North Carolina State, 17 to 6. And right after the short break, Dana Cuff and the gang will join you for the ACC Network halftime report. Welcome to the huddle. Halftime here. 17 6 home team Florida State is winning alongside Mr. T. I mean, sorry, Coach Mark Rick. <laughs> we got EJ Manuel, Eric jewel. McLean in the building. Uh, I'm Dallin Cuff. I will start and say first, we, it was pretty hard on Florida State's fans for last week. They were pretty rock solid in their performance to this point. What about the quarterback situation, though? Yeah. Hornybrook starts, plays every position, every, every snap. What are your thoughts on his performance? Sure. Well, we all thought Hornybrook was going to play in this game. Just if you look at the injury from last week with uh, Blackman, it looked nasty. So I'm glad that it, they had Hornybrook in this one. There's no point in trying to force James to play when he's still kind of hurt. So uh, he's come in and done exactly what we thought he would do. He's a, he's a veteran. He's been in these moments before. Um, he's efficient. He's doing a great job of managing the game, not trying to put the ball in harm's way, and that's all you can really ask from a backup quarterback. Absolutely, and you want to see him get a little bit more protection, right? We, we sat here and praised the offensive line because they were run blocking so well, and now they're giving up four sacks, and you've got a backup getting hit. But he is staying in the pocket. He's passing efficiently. And they're not run blocking so well. They've got a uh, whopping zero yards rushing, yeah. although some of it is after, because of, what, three or four sacks? Yeah. But uh, Cam's got, what, 20-some yards? 23 yards, yeah. So uh, 23 gain, he had minus one, so he's net 22. Yeah. Well, real quick, though, what do you think about Willie Taggart's, uh, let's say, poker face all week? I mean, he, he really it made it seem like Blackman was going to start. He said he was healthy, yeah. and he, he's never taken a snap. How do you yeah, feel about that approach? I, I think that those guys are going to play pretty much the similar game to me. If you have two quarterbacks that are wildly different in style, I think that's maybe worthy of – keeping it a secret as long as possible. But if you're going to run the same game plan, the same plays. It's a great point. It's, I mean, why do it? I, right. But, you know, if it makes everybody feel a little bit better about the week that you're not giving away the, you know, company secrets, that's okay. Yeah. All right, we'll, we'll get to the NC State in a little bit later with you know, a Hawkman start of playing and a lot of possessions, a lot of snaps uh, for them. Uh, when we come back, we'll break down a little more of this first half. 17-6, Knowles up over the pack. ACC Network primetime football presented by Geico and from Doe Campbell Stadium in Tallahassee. We're getting set for the second half. FSU on top of NC State, 17 to 6. Dave O'Brien alongside Tim Hasselbeck and Alex Hornibur coming off the bench and playing this game from the get go. And with a couple of big receivers out there, he found them. He did. And, you know, really, there hasn't been a whole lot of offense in this game and really. No rhythm for either team, but Alex Hornibrook, his ability to find big plays has been the difference so far. So Florida State with a football here in the second half. And going to bust it long. Here's Helton all the way down the left side. <laughs> 58 yards. And not a bad way to start the second half. A great way for Florida State to start the second half. We talked about their second half, you know, woes this season. That's a great way to kick it off. And really, the difference for them has been the big plays in the passing game. You know, I mentioned just a second ago their inability to get into a rhythm offensively. Well, they've gotten two huge plays in the passing game. One on a slant to Tamari on Terry that he's able to take to the house because of his speed. And then a slant and go to Pokey Wilson. And Alex Hornibrook's able to put it on him. That's really been the difference in this football game. Little bobble. He'll fire. Complete. Now it's free. And NC State able to jump on that. In and out of the hands of Trey McKitty, but it's going to be incomplete. They call it incomplete. 
I think incomplete is the, the proper call here as McKitty gets hit. I don't know that he ever has it secure as Miller is able to hit him first. And it's actually a good job of Hornybrook kind of gathering the snap as it was high before he threw that seam. Brings up second down and 10. Akers nowhere to run on his first carry, taken down by Moore. Isaiah Moore with the tackle. So third and 11. And again, if you're just joining us, James Blackman, the regular starter, injured last week, knee injury, has not played it down for FSU in this one. Hornibrook trying to scramble now and throws that one. And Harrison, the target. Good quarterback pressure there by Lias. So they got nothing out of that. That's a huge win for this NC State defense. I mean, I, you have to think that that was the conversation at halftime. Hey, Florida State's going to get this football. You know, in order for us to get something going on offense, we need a quick three and out, and that's exactly what they get. After a very long kickoff return, which put them in great field position, they are Thomas back for the punt, standing at the 10-yard line. And down this one inside the five yard line. A tremendous play on the coverage by Samuel. Let's go down to Larisha. Well, I spoke to head coach Willie Taggart of Florida State, and he gave me the reason as to why we have not seen James Blackman, and that is because he actually tweaked his knee again yesterday. We were told that he had a great practice all week, but he wasn't comfortable with him playing him today. And then I caught up with head coach Dave Doran, and he told me the reasoning as to why we have seen Bailey Hawkman, and that's because he said they needed a spark. The other quarterback, Matthew McKay, was not producing as he wanted to, so he put in Bailey Hawkman so that they can get that spark and be a little more productive on the offensive side. Now, Larisha, thank you. And we kind of had that thought that maybe he did something either today or yesterday to tweak that knee injury, and they wanted to stay away from him. On the handoff as this drive begins from the two-yard line, it's Ricky Person. Yeah, Dave, I think we're probably a little bit less surprised. We were planning on seeing Alex Hornibrook. We knew James Blackman was banged up. And so we thought we would see both quarterbacks at some point, you know, but Matthew McKay starts the game. So when you flip it over to the other side, Matthew McKay starts the game really given no indication that felt like Matthew McKay, you know, would be in a situation where, you know, he would give way to the, for the entire game to Bailey Hawkman, which seems like is happening now. Jackson taking down person. And he is shaken up on the play. And the opening seconds of the second half with Florida State in the lead 17 to 6 over NC State. Well, sophomore running back Ricky Person Jr. is the man down. We're not going to show you the injury here. And they do have an air cast out and they have the card out as well as teammates looking on with great concern. 6'1, 220 pound sophomore from Wake Forest, North Carolina. The guy who is the number two rusher behind Bam Knight. Injuries have kind of stalled his progress, but he is on his back here and was all through the commercial break as well. In person for this North Carolina State offense really was their, you know, their power back, their best short yardage runner, who's also, you know, probably the back, considering the other two running backs are, are true freshmen that. You know, they trusted the most in pass protection, maybe the most reliable. And obviously you hope that the Ricky person is OK as they, they get him up onto the cart. It's certainly going to put the North Carolina State offense into a situation where they're playing true freshman running backs now between Jordan Houston and, and Bam Knight, who you know already has a fumble on the evening. Ricky at Heritage High at Wake Forest was coached by three former NFL players Dwayne Washington Torrey Holt and Willie Parker. So a lot of excellent coaching. Unfortunately he's about to leave the game here. At Tallahassee with 13 28 to go in the third quarter and Florida State with a 17 to 6 lead. And his teammates coming over. To try and console him a little bit.
And receiving a very warm hand here by the fans of Florida State. So Bam Knight will come back in as the running back for the Wolfpack. Who have been led almost all night long by a sophomore quarterback, the number two man, Bailey Hawkman. They were hoping for a spark. Third and one. And he meets a wall. Knight with a carry, but met by Leonard Warner first. And that's going to bring up fourth down. And Leonard Warner's a guy that they've moved around this defense a little bit. He's played outside. He's playing inside here. And he just fills. 6'4", 241, and he just met Bam Knight right in the hole. Nice play by the inside back. So Trenton Gill, the punt from the end zone. With Matthews back at his 40. And a very short punt. It takes a nice hop, though, and will roll to the 38. Here's a breakdown of the yardage tonight for the Seminoles. Look at this 83 yards on two touchdown passes. And that's really been the story of the game. I mean, neither offense has got things going. You said Dave Dorn wanted, you know, a spark the offense. That's why Hawkman's playing. I think that. Willie Taggart felt like there would be a spark also. That's why Hornibrick was scheduled to play even without the James Blackman injury. And we haven't seen it, but what we have seen is two big plays because of the speed at wideout for Florida State. Pokey Wilson on the slant and go and Terry on the slant that he was able to take to the house. Scary Terry. He had a very big game against NC State last year too. And he's off to the races tonight. With a handoff, it's Akers looking to bounce outside across the 40. Pushed out by Tanner Engel, but not before a gain of eight. And this is all Cam Akers. This isn't blocked well at all. He's got pursuit from behind. Front side isn't any good. He's just able to bounce it and then bounce it again. And I don't think people talk about his speed enough. They talk about his, his power, but those yards were made by the running back alone. On the reception, Warren Thompson on the catch. And FSU on the move. That picks up 11. It's a nice job of Hornibrook. Looks like Thompson is in of layering the football. I think he does a nice job of changing the, the trajectory of the, of the throw. Certainly necessary there with an underneath defender. He'll throw again and complete to pick up another first down. Bokey Wilson, he's liked him tonight. And it's Wilson on Keyshawn Miller. You know, again, a, a reserve corner who's, you know, being forced into action because of injuries. And they're just winning easy, easily on these slants and able to run a little bit afterwards. Wilson's already caught a touchdown pass. Flares this one out. That's Cam Akers. And we talked with Florida State about his pass catching ability and where to rank it. They said 10 out of 10. Great hands. And I think that. That's why Dave Dorn said to us, he's special. He's the guy that you have to deal with because he can do it all. And a big part of his getting the ball in the run game and the pass game. Whatever, trying to keep that, but down he goes. Taken down by Asus, the junior from Spring Valley, New York. And that'll bring up third down and eight. Well, second half has been a very different story for Florida State, particularly the fourth quarter, where they've really scrapped the score as opposed to early in the game, where in the first quarter they've been the best in the ACC. He has time in the pocket. Now scrambling, trying to get loose. Down he goes, taken down by Elias. That is the sixth time he's been sacked. Yeah, and I think he just, he kind of causes this one. You see there's a bit of a panic there. It's outstanding pass protection. You know, this offensive line is, you know, has been highly criticized, but they do a really nice job there versus a three-man rush, and Hornibrook drops his eyes, and, and rather than just kind of staying in there, remaining a passer, 
Seemed like he was trying to be eager to escape and basically walks himself into a sack. Now here's Aguayo from 47 yards. Remember he missed three against Louisville last weekend. That kick is up and that kick is no good. He has missed another one. It remains 17 6 FSU. FSU's great radio voice Gene Dekaroff calling his 500 Seminole game tonight. The voice of FSU football since 79. Named Florida Sportscaster of the Year 14 times. He's in the FSU Hall of Fame. Here's his touchdown call tonight. Here's the snap, the Hornet, but quick pass. Caught ball. First down of the 30. Across the 25 to the 20. To the 15 to the 10. 5, 3, 2, 1. Touchdown to Mario Terry. He is scary. And the Noles retake the lead. Uh, he is scary, and Gene is a legend here at Florida State. Yeah, it's outstanding. 500 games, and obviously a great call there to Mario and Terry. One of the most exciting plays of the game so far. I'd say that's number one. Well, the Wolfpack trailing 17 to 6, and an incomplete pass. Uh, first and 10, intended for Powell. Well, Hawkman has not provided the lift they had hoped for. We've thrown 10 passes coming into this game. Now he's playing with two true freshman running backs. They were looking for a spark, and I don't think that it's come. And, and so you just wonder if this offense continues to sputter with him, if we would maybe see Matt McKay back in the lineup. Remaining on the sideline, second down and 10. Houston, one of the freshman running backs. He'll get the call here, and they snuffed that out quickly. Dontavious Jackson jumped on him, and he had nowhere to go. You know, Jackson just times up his pressure. Here he comes. He comes from here. He's just going to run this thing down from behind. I mean, that's just incredible effort, good instincts, great timing on the blitz by Jackson, who... You know, we've been kind of in and out of the lineup. They've been rotating him with Rice, and but that's great instincts and basically seeing it and hitting it. Trent Penix now into the back. Wants to throw, and that one nearly intercepted and broken up on the sideline by Asante Samuel as they were looking for Hines, but nearly picked. Yeah, Asante Samuel really does a good job on this out. He, he kind of collisions Hines at the top of the route, and then almost un undercuts it. And if you're, you know, Hockman, you got to miss outside because that was dangerously close to going back the other way. By the way, his father, Asante Samuel, from the Patriots, as we remember, the two-time Super Bowl champion, he kind of has that same aggressiveness to his he game, does. you know, where he, he is looking to jump yep. in nearly every single round. It's in the DNA. There's no denying that. Matthew's back to receive the punt. And he's going to run it. It's the 30 time to make a spin move, and he's taken down. So that's where the drive will begin here for FSU on top 17 to 6 here in the third quarter at Tallahassee. Welcome back to Bobby Bowden Field at Dope Campbell Stadium, where Florida State has a 17 to 6 lead over NC State. Wolfpack playing their first ACC game of the season. FSU at 2 and 2. They get a bye week coming up. And so they want very much to have a nice win over a tough opponent heading into that bye week. Arnie Burke to roll and fire into the flat. Complete to Laburn and taken down by Drake Thomas. And picks up four. Hornibrook with a lot of targets, some terrific wide receivers. That'll be complete to Keith Gavin to bring up third down. Hornibrook out of Chester, Pennsylvania. 6'4", about 220. And a handoff and a first down. 
Labron strong up the middle. Very elusive running back. You know, we don't talk about him much because we see so much of Cam Akers, but Labron, a good back in his own right, and does a good job there on third and short. It was well blocked, just kind of lowers his pad level. Right down the middle and complete to Keyshawn Helton before Engel stopped him. And another big gain, this one for 24 yards. Yeah, and you just look at Helton, does a good job of just working into the middle. It's zone coverage. Find that void there, kind of throttles down a little bit, and good job of catching him by Hornibook. Helton again, this time to the left side. He's collared out. Taken down by Wilson. Did not see a flag. Well, it looked initially like a pretty late hit, didn't it? You know, it was on the boundary there, and Wilson is, is pursuing. And it was certainly a violent hit. No flag thrown. Second down and three. And he'll throw that one out. Good pressure by Drake Thomas, the middle linebacker, who is coming. You know, an NC State's defense needs to do something to spark this team. You know, we're putting all the pressure on their offense to, you know, get something going, but, you know, haven't created a turnover. You know, you, you kind of find yourself in these third down situations. Can you get off the field and give Bailey Hawkman another opportunity with the football? Four out of 11 on third downs for FSU. And from the 24-yard line. Third and three, he'll throw short. Trying to pick up the first down. Laburn and stopped by Miller. And did they get it? I mean, just look at this offensive line, Dave. I mean, look at them. They all cut. Look at them all go to the ground and just and cut, trying to get the hands down. But you're, you're basically just stoning that front of NC State. It's a three-man front. And it's almost like they're afraid to come off the ball in fear of getting cut because of the way that offensive line is pass protecting in the quick game. And they do pick up the first down. So they're moving the sticks. Down to the 21 yard line of NC State. And they're jumping on the line. Full start, offense number 75. Five yard penalty, first down. Abdul Bello on a false start. I believe that's his second false start. He's actually done a nice job filling in the Juwan Williams who's been out with an ankle injury. and. You know, Bellow's been a guy that, you know, for the most part has is, is held his own considering, you know, how banged up and how injured and kind of how much they've shuffled around guys on that offensive line. Brady Scott out and Mike Arnold in at the guard and a timeout. Timeout, Florida State. FSU takes one here on top, 17 to 6 in the third. Oh, fun with T-shirts. Don't the kids love T-shirts, especially when the talent is throwing it to them? I think what they were excited about was that Larisha is actually left-handed. So when I was throwing it, they, they were calling for the lefty since we've seen Hornybrook and Hawkman tonight. That's what they were doing. They were like, no, get the righty out of here. Yeah. We're glad that you've brought the lefty in. Call there. for the lefty from the bullpen. And Larisha's right there to take over. 6.07 to go, third quarter. Here at FSU, family weekend here, good crowd on hand. Hardwood looking and finds Matthews, but it's incomplete. And him open for a moment, 6.02 to go in the third, second down. Kendall Bryles, the offensive coordinator, they've been averaging about 34 points a game. And they're going a little slower, Dave, you know, and, and I think that is there a little more of their conditioning, maybe issues, they slowed it down a bit. Harvard evades one man, but not a second. Taken down by Murchison. Yeah, really, it's another corner blitz. Here it comes off of the slot here, and just look at Hornybrook's eye focus. He doesn't see it coming. He's got no idea. It's not picked up, and, you know, it ends up leading to the sack. 
you know, one of the problems with going fairly fast is you do need to, as a quarterback, identify the rotation of the secondary to be alert for a corner pressure. He's been sacked seven times. Which is a big number. I know they run a lot of plays, and it, the offensive line is struggling, but that's a lot of hits on the quarterback. Trying to get free. Goes down again. It's Murchison all over him. And that's been the case all night long. Yeah, and this is a bad look by the offensive line. You know, I showed a second ago the, those cut blocks. We're getting it again. If you look at Bello, who again, I, you know, and Scott in there, you know, as they're trying to cut, you know, they basically just whiff. And so it's Holden and then Merchinson, you know, that end up getting there for the sack. And I'm not really sure. I understand it in the quick game, but the quarterback has to understand if that is going to be the technique in your quick game, you can't hold it. The ball needs to come out because your offensive linemen are laying on their stomachs about a second after the snap. On the punt. That will take a hop inside the 10. And be down right there. Weekday mornings on ACC Network. Packer and Durham exclusively talking ACC sports. From football to field hockey, Packer and Durham will cover all of it every Monday through Friday from 7 to 10 a.m. here on ACCN and also on the ESPN app. But make a special stop, what is it, Wednesday at 8.30? Wednesday, 9.30, Dave. 9.30. 9.30 Central, though. I know you're thinking Central time. Um, get to preview this week, you have the, uh, the big Duke-Pitt game. Obviously, Duke, a great performance. Ran. Ran Virginia Tech basically, you know, now off look, the field. Look at this. They had a 9% chance before Friday to win that game. And they were spectacular in that victory on the road. Looking for the quick hit intended for a Mizzy, but he did not make the play. And incomplete with 422 to go in the third. Somebody for, for NC State's got to step up and make a play. Somebody's got to make a play. And I know they're a young team, but they need some type of spark. We're looking for it from the quarterback, but it can come from anywhere. Second and 10 from the end zone. And complete to Thomas. Took a pretty nasty lick there. As will Dean does that a lot. He'll come up and say hello. He's a big time hitter. You know, he flies around, covers a lot of space, and you know, as that shallow cross is coming, and you're in zone coverage. As a quarterback, you need to be the eyes for your wide receivers. He's running the shallow cross, and Nazra Dean comes up and pops him. Third and seven at the 10-yard line. Crowd is up in Tallahassee. Hockman broken up. And incomplete, nearly picked as well. The defense continues to buckle down for the Seminoles. They do, but Amezi needs to make this play for his quarterback. You know, Amezi, I believe, is their best wide receiver. He's kind of made himself into a good player. He's big, he's strong, he's fast. He wins on the slant route, much like he won on, on first down. Just needs to make the play. Kind of help your team get out of from being backed up in your own end. It's on fourth and seven. That'll force the punt. And that's three straight three and outs for that NC State offense. Now you really wonder, okay, what else could spark that offense? And a high wobbly punt. Matthews wants to run with it. Trying to get free. Ooh. Pretty good lick there by Peyton Wilson. He laid it on him. He did lay it on him. I mean, Peyton Wilson, who we were told is going to be a great player. I mean, they were eager to say it and saw the play on the sideline, Helton, and I mean, these are like clotheslines by Peyton Wilson. The redshirt freshman, 6'4", 235, big guy, but I mean, that's like some some wrestling type moves, like off the top rope by Wilson. Outstanding field position here. From their own 49, FSU first and 10. And a handoff, Akers trying to negotiate his way across the 50. Cam Akers with a gain of two. Averaging 125 rushing yards per game. Been a lighter load so far tonight. At least so far with about three minutes to go in the third quarter.
Alex Hornibrook has played the entire game for FSU, the backup quarterback. He'll roll left. And complete. Helton makes a move. It was Treshawn Harrison as he hauls that in for a 10 yard game. Just the speed is so evident, Dave, when you, know, you see Harrison catches it out in space. Just the ability to, to then make a guy miss and then ultimately end up getting the first down. On a run to the right side. That was DJ Matthews taken down by Moorhead. Yeah, you look at Hornibrook. He basically, you know, flips this to Matthews. That's a pass. We're going to call that a completion. But now they're running the option. You know, that's DJ Matthews running the option with Cam Akers. And really, Griffin doesn't know what to do, how to play that. Certainly weren't preparing to, to face D.J. Matthews in the option. That one gun to the side, and a completion to Wilson. Wilson breaks a tackle. Turns that into a big gain. Finally stopped by Ingram, but not before a 19-yard rumble. Again, it's Hornibrook moving to his left. That's when he's most comfortable. It moves to his left. Just make sure he stays in bounds here, which he does. But again, it's, it's the speed and quickness of these Florida State wide receivers. Wilson's had a big night, five receptions, 96 yards, big touchdown. It went for 39 yards in the first half. On a handoff, Akers. Busts out, gets inside the 10. That is some hard running and a missed tackle by Moorhead, too. As he gains six. You rarely see the first guy or just one guy get Cam Akers down. And we saw us. NC State. NC State will take a timeout. Just before the end of the third quarter. And FSU driving hard here. Second down and four coming. You, know, you think about Cam Akers. I mean, he, he basically does it all for this team. He carries the ball a lot. Just. This is not blocked well. You know, there's one missed tackle. There's Thomas. There's another missed tackle. Runs through Ingles hit and falls forward. I mean, it, you know, that is a dream for an offensive play call. You just look at the violence, throwing Moorhead off him, running through Thomas. Ingle, we've talked about, is a big-time hitter. And then you're still following, falling forward. We've seen Cam Akers tonight a couple times really be the reason that it's a positive game. Should be a tackle for loss, and we look up and it's a four-yard game. What did Willie Taggart tell us in the meetings yesterday? He said he's our bell cow. He is our go-to guy. He's on pace for 1,500 yards this season, which would be third all-time at FSU in a single season. Second down and four. With a minute five to go in the third. Quarterback keeps it to the end zone, and touchdown! Caught by Terry, his second touchdown reception of the night. This one from nine yards to make it 23-6 to six Florida State. It's a nice call by Kendall Bryles. Really hard play action. We just saw Cam Akers have a nice run where he's breaking tackles. So hard play action to Cam Akers, and that gets everybody to flow up and we will pop in behind him. 59 seconds to go in the third. And the extra point is perfect. 24-6 to six FSU. You look at what happens. It's going to be a little run action, and because of that, you're going to see Miller and Engel just flow up. And what that does is it lets Terry go in behind off of the play action. It's good patience on the fake. You see everybody draw up. Then a good job of putting the ball up there. Probably would like to have it a little bit higher and take some of the mystery out of it. But there's the fake bluff block there by Terry. And then a good job of just going up and fighting for the football. Samarian so Terry had the best game of his career last season against NC State. That was on the road. 142 yards receiving. And two touchdowns. And James Blackman unable to play tonight. But a big-time cheerleader for his teammates. You love to see that. It's part of what being on a team is all about. And 
You know, I think you also have to like it for Alex Hornibrook if you, if you just think about his career. You know, he played a bunch of games and won a bunch of games at Wisconsin and comes here as a grad transfer and is not named the starter in a close battle coming out of training camp to get an opportunity in a ACC game and come out and throw three touchdown passes has been fairly impressive. Yeah, back to back weeks now. Hussein back to take the fair catch. Let's go down to Larisha. Well, you guys already talked about how James Blackman has been a cheerleader on the sideline. Well, when we spoke to head coach Willie Taggart, he said that was one of the small wins that he noticed from their previous win over Louisville, how the team was starting to really play together and play for their brothers. He called it selflessness, and we've seen that all throughout the sidelines, everybody going up to each other, congratulating each other, encouraging each other to push through, to keep fighting, and to keep the momentum going from what they have already started here tonight. Well, a lot of that is taking for FSU, and you can see more than subtle changes being made. You know, a lot of the silly penalties are going away, and more unselfishness certainly coming to the fore for Florida State. It's a very good sign for the Seminoles. Hockman now running for his life, head over the sideline, and incomplete. And tipped by Asante Samuel is having a very strong night. You know, Dave, you, you talk about the team coming together. Part of what will help that happen is when the quarterback that's playing will go between last week and this week, 41 for 55, throw five touchdowns and no interceptions. All of a sudden, guys can start to come together a little bit when that happens. And feel a lot better about the season. Trying to get to three and two tonight. Hockman again, flushed out of there. Again on the move, but he'll complete that pass to Fisher and moves the chains. 36 seconds to go in the third. That went for 17. Maybe a late hit here. Foul. Roughing the passer. Defense number 15 yard penalty out at the end of the run. First down. It goes on Brendan Gant, the strong safety. Those are the kind of penalties that have hurt them in past games. Not so much tonight, but this one will. Yeah, and you think about the struggles NC State has had, you know, tonight. The last thing you need to do is after they have a, you know, a completion for a first down, is attack another 15 onto it and really make them feel like they have life. That moves it all the way to the 43 of FSU. And on the pitch, and a big hit before Houston is taken down by Akeem Dent with a gain of seven. So coming up on the end of the third quarter with Florida State on top of NC State 24 to 6 here tonight in Tallahassee. Very nice crowd on hand. They have enjoyed it so far. The Seminoles into the fourth quarter up 24 to 6. Well, about to get the fourth quarter underway. That has not always been the friend of the Seminoles, even though they're on top 24 to 6. They've had the lead and they've trailed in every single fourth quarter so far this season. Wolfpack trying to make a move here. Houston bouncing outside. He'll spin. Tried to stay on his feet, but getting down close to the 15 is Will Dean stopping him. So that's been the story. Florida State blowing leads. They were up 21 to nothing last weekend. Came back, lost the lead, came back and won the game. <laughs> that's why you have to think there's got to be some doubt in their mind because of what they've gone through this season. Houston on a run, stopped by Wilson. So second down and nine. Looking for a stop here. The defense has been tremendous. So far tonight for the Seminoles. And Levante Taylor, the right corner back in there. He's had a superb game. Wolfback has had no luck tonight in the red zone. 
Fire for the end zone and overthrown. Intended for Angela, but there is a flag down on the play. Durden pleading his case. Defense number 16. Half the distance to the goal, first down. And again, these are the penalties that have hurt them so much late in games this season. Talking about 30 yards right here, you know, that we've seen recently. He's just late and he's up high. Late and up high on the quarterback. You're going to get it. I mean, he's wondering why it's there, but. I mean, it's clearly a penalty. And I, I just don't know why it happens at this point in the game for this team, especially when it. I know they're being coached. We talked to Willie Taggart. He's talking to his team about not having those types of penalties. And here we go. We've seen two of them. They didn't have them last week. Only five penalties total against Louisville. The major reason they won the game. Sure is. This will bring up first and goal. Hockman looking for the end zone. Here they come, and they take him down. And he gets absolutely bas blasted. I mean, Robinson coming off the edge just is able to turn the corner. And to be honest with you, you're almost fortunate you don't get roughing there with his helmet, you know, up in the head and neck area of the quarterback. FSU with their first sack. Going on the field on a further review. So they're going to review a possible fumble here. NC State's Jordan Houston recovered that. This Florida State defense, when they're not hurting themselves, they're coming after the quarterback. Great pressure by Durden and Robinson getting after Hawkman. Further review, there is targeting on defense, number 11. By rule, he is disqualified. The foul is half the distance to the goal, first down. That is Janarius Robinson, the junior defensive end. He is ejected from the game, leading with the crown of the helmet into the head or neck area with a launch. And he had no idea that it was coming. He had no idea that that was being reviewed. But it's the right call. I mean, he's leading with the crown of his helmet. And he does it into the head and neck area of a defenseless player of which a quarterback is considered that when he's in the pocket. He doesn't like it, but that is. That is the rule. So they missed the first half against Clemson. And he'll miss the rest of this one. Robinson ejected with 13 18 to go. Adonis Thomas comes in for him. Number 22. Trying to get the crowd going. Thirteen eighteen to play. Twenty four six FSU. First and goal. Emmanuel McGirt, an extra offensive lineman. And a big opportunity here for the Wolfpack to get right back in the game. Robinson hanging around trying to get a peek on his way out. And now the crowd really trying to make some noise. And whistles at the time of the handoff. Rolling on the field is under further review. So we'll see what this is all about. Wonder if that's for the spot. Well, I mean the ball was loose, and so I think that maybe where they place the ball and then the with the targeting foul. But you would think when you were reviewing targeting that you would address the entire situation at that point. 
rather than pulling everybody out, letting everybody know that Robinson has been disqualified for targeting. Let NC State line up at the line of scrimmage and then say, okay, now we're going to review it again. Right, yeah. It's a waste of time. The ball on the four yard line. And this one certainly stalling things for NC State. Yet another delay. Yeah, listen, I, I think officiating is, is difficult. And I don't like to ever kind of be in a situation where just being critical of the officials. And, and I think they get the targeting call right. With that being said, we've seen a couple of stops, you know, stoppage of plays that, you know, I think have impacted the flow of the football game, no especially doubt. for offenses sure. that want to move with tempo. Yeah, they both do. After target, it's supposed to be half the distance to the goal line. And that's what they're trying to figure out on the spot here. So that is what they're looking at. With 13, 13 to go. Florida State 24, NC State 6. We are in the fourth quarter. It's been a fascinating night as far as the quarterbacks are concerned. Here's so, the deal. Yep. You Look, fumbled it, but Jordan Houston of NC State actually recovered the fumble. He does, and he, and he gets tackled at about what looked like to me about the 14, 15 yard line. But I would bet you that even if you talk to Dave Dorn, he'd say, I don't know, it was around the 15 ish, split the difference, cut it in half, and and here we go. Let's let's go play football. Well, it is the 14 yard line and it's supposed to be marked at the seven yard line. Right now spotted on the four yard line. So this is quite a conversation here where not a lot is going on. Well, it's a spot review and the crowd's getting antsy. Well, based on what we've seen, Dave, there's really no reason it should be on the four-yard line. Okay? So if we say it was on the 14-yard line and it's half the distance... The ball will be placed at the three-and-a-half-yard line, first down. Please reset the game clock to 13-18. 13-18. So we're actually going to move it forward a half a yard. I don't really understand that. I don't understand that at all, because we saw Jordan Houston get tackled about the 14, 15, yard, probably forward progress at the 14-yard line. In any event, at the three and a half. And first and goal for the Wolfpack. Houston in the back along with Bailey Hockman. Quarterback who's played all but three series. And he's the number two man. He'll fire it. Diving for the end zone. And as he is in. And a touchdown Wolfpack. That goes from three yards out. So from three yards, and he's had a big night, 75 yards and a couple of touchdowns. It's a little wide receiver outside there. Thomas does a good job of blocking Asante Samuel, and then Fagan just can't get there fast enough. That's why that spot ended up being critical, to be honest with you. You can run a play like that from the three-yard line and score a touchdown. And they're going to go for the two-point conversion. And they should to make it a ten-point game. Hockman for the flag down. Fires for the end zone. Amezi again, but a flag on the play. Amezi doesn't get set. They have two men moving. So after the shift, Amezi just went right in motion. They're going to call him an illegal procedure. Illegal shift. Offense. Two players in motion at the snap. Five-yard penalty. Replay the point. Thirteen minutes left in this one. Yeah, now I think because of the penalty, you're going to kick the extra point, and you're just going to go for two. You know, later if, if if you need to go for two later if you get that opportunity. So Christopher Dunn on for the point after to make it 24 to 13. Well, it's been a choppy offensive game for the Wolfpack, certainly, but they're right back in it. Plenty of time. 
And the point after is good. 13 minutes to go, 24 13, FSU. ACC Network Primetime Football is presented by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Well, not the offensive slugfest many had anticipated, but it's tightened up. FSU's lead now cut to 24 to 13 as NC State has punched it in their first touchdown tonight here in the fourth quarter with 13 minutes to go. Yeah, they're kind of clawing their way back into it. And you think about, you know, Dave Huxtable, the defensive coordinator for NC State. You think about Tony Gibson. He's, you know, they want to be aggressive, finding a way to, to give that offense another opportunity. It's in Dave Dorn's DNA to be aggressive. Won't be surprised to see something, you know, whether a surprise on side or maybe even an opportunity to come up with some pressures on the defensive side. So Gill with a kickoff. And Helton. Let's it roll on out. We take a look at tonight's player spotlight brought to you by Geico. Yeah, and you just look at the last two weeks, the production that they've got from Alex Hornibrook. And he's not the same athlete as James Blackman. Probably doesn't throw the ball as well, but he has been efficient. And they've gotten big plays from their speedy wide receivers. Seems like the move by Willie Taggart is paying off. He's played in some important games, certainly with Wisconsin. He was the MVP of the 2017 Orange Bowl. And we'll bring him out for first and ten at the 25. James Blackman has been on the sideline all night with that knee sprain. Tweaked it again yesterday. They were leaning towards starting him. They said they were going to, in fact. If not for that, Akers dragged down. And a loss. Now Seuss got to him first. So a loss of two, second down and 12. Marty Brook is senior and playing like one. They'll keep it and fire and complete. Right there on the first and down marker, Warren Thompson driven out by Chris Ingram. That picks up 14 and a first down. I mean, just look at the route. It's going to whip it back outside. You just look at the separation it gets. And the fact that you can kind of run in a little arrow route and then get to the perimeter there just is, is showing you kind of the difference in speed between the defensive backs for NC State and the wide receivers for Florida State. Akers, they're going to get the edge. A flag is down. As he is pushed out after a first down run, but a flag down. Holding offense number 75, 10 yard penalty, first down. And it would have been an 18 yard pickup, but it's coming back. Now, do Bello, the left tackle, with a hold. With 11.55 to go. NC State playing their first ACC game of the season here tonight. Wolfpack were, in fact, the first team to beat FSU on their home turf after the Knowles joined the ACC in 1992. And they've beaten them the last two times. But the Knowles with the upper hand tonight in Tallahassee. Akers again. Trying to break free. Val Martin wraps him up. And that holding penalty is such a big penalty when you just think about trying to remain on schedule in some way. I mean, you got second and 19, and you know, if NC State can just kind of keep them from gaining any more than five yards right here, you kind of create an opportunity to do what I was talking about, where you, you get aggressive on defense. You maybe bring a pressure to try to get a, a hit on the quarterback, a fumble, or confuse them, come up with an interception. Seminoles actually ahead in time of possession tonight. They're last in the country in that category. He's coming into play tonight. Matthews with a catch. Trying to dart inside of the 50. DJ Matthews with a big hit. 22 yards. 
you look at Matthews, he's just working the seam. They bring a slot pressure as he works in the middle of the field. You see Thomas is trying to get some depth. It's an excellent job of Hornibrook of, of layering the football, getting it up and down over the linebacker. Well, Akers still churning ahead. Extra yards after the first man met him. Finally taken down by Peyton Wilson. Seven-yard gain. Brings up second and three. And the Knolls are on the move. You would think that this is just Cam Akers' time. You know, they mentioned 25 touches. He's got 16 carries. You just see the way that he's finishing runs. ACC's top rusher. Second down and three. Hornibrook to throw. And lofts that one out of play. Third down and three. You know, you, you kind of changed the play at the line of scrimmage. We looked to the left, DJ Matthews and Wilson. Both those guys are blocking. I think they thought it was a run play. And Hornybrook is looking out there to throw them the football, and they're out there blocking the guys that are covering them. Five out of 13 on third down conversions. And from the 44, Hornybrook stepping up. Now on the run. Taken down, very close to the first down by Peyton Wilson. And you look at Hornibrook here, does a good job escaping. I'm not sure he doesn't get to that 40 yard line. Akers, straight ahead. He takes off. Cam Akers, touchdown. Well, you had said it 30 seconds ago that it was his time of the night, and he breaks free. He's just such a good back. He's got good patience. He's got good vision. He has the breakaway speed. You just feel like he's got the ability to just lean on you and lean on you and lean on you, fall forward, fall forward, and then spring one. And nobody takes him down on the first try. He scores from 41 yards. And the Seminoles to make it 31 to 13 against NC State. Yeah, Cam Akers just pours it up in there. And you said it, Dave. Not one guy bringing him down, runs through arm tackles, able to walk into the end zone. Cam Akers busting free, 41 yards for the touchdown to make it 31-13 FSU with 9-13 to play here tonight in Tallahassee. Now we'll see if the Wolfpack have a big time comeback left in them. Hussein will catch it. Well, Bello, the right tackle, he comes over, or the left tackle, he comes over. They make an create an unbalanced look. Miller. The corner is out of position. He doesn't get lined up correctly. And so now your run fits are all messed up. As Bello gets up on the Seuss, frees it here. There's Miller right there. He's not in position to make the play on Cam Akers, and that's why he's able to split it, is you're not aligned properly. I mean, defense is all about alignment, then assignment. They don't get aligned properly, and Cam Akers makes them pay. And looking up at that Jumbotron as he rumbles into the end zone to get a good look at his rush. Here's Thomas. Nice move to the left. And shoved out of bounds. There Thomas to pick up the first down, 14 yards. NC State needs a big strike. Hockman looking short over the middle and complete. That'll be caught by Devin Carter for six. And you wonder how much Hockman 
how much work he's gotten with the starters in a two minute drive situation you know which you know you're in a hurry up now it's essentially a two minute drive situation as you need multiple scores he'll throw again and throw short once again and complete cut by Angeline and a flag on the play Eight nineteen left. Personal foul. Targeting. Defense number 23. Ruling on the field of targeting is under further review. That is on Nazrul Dean, one of their top defenders, the free safety. I, I'm going to have a hard time with this one because the truth of the matter is you've got a six foot seven, 250 pound tight end who catches the football is running down the field who then it looks like he gives himself up and slides feet first like a quarterback. I mean, if you're a defender, I, I don't know why you would think a man as large as Kerry Angeline is going to slide feet first and give himself up. I mean, if you're Nazro Dean, you're, you're expecting to come make the tackle against a big tight end. Not that he's going to give himself up, and, and now all of a sudden you're making contact up high and... Florida State's already had one man ejected. Janarius Robinson has been tossed out for targeting several minutes ago. The targeting review process is there an indicator? Attack with forcible conduct by the launch, thrust from the crouch, the lowering of the head, leading with the helmet, forearm, or shoulder. And if yes, then is the attack with the crown of the helmet? Is the player defenseless? Yes. Is the attack at the head or the neck area? And if yes, it's a targeting foul. They're still looking. So if they lose another player, that's two in the second half to targeting. And their next game is Clemson, and, and we're in the second half. And so that's certainly not what Florida State needs in that matchup I, I think they're going to uphold it and I would just say, that would be my guess from what I'd seen based on the rule but I would also say this I think I think it's got to you got to we got to treat it differently when you're talking about a 6 foot 7 250 pound tight end he is of course the ball carrier there as well he is but but he kind of You know, and so as you're sliding feet first, you're giving yourself up. And so then at that point, you're defenseless. After further review, there is no targeting on the play. The result of the play is a first down. So Nazrul Dean will continue to play. I think that's the right decision. I think if it was a quarterback with that bang bang hit, I think they would have upheld it. Yep. I, 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 and so I think the officials did the right thing there. So just over eight minutes left. Hockman needs some magic. Downfield and complete. Looking for Thayer Thomas, one of his top receivers, but incomplete. Well, head coach Dave Dorn in his seventh year has the Wolf back with a three and one record. At their ACC opener tonight. You just look at those numbers from Brady Hockman or Bailey Hockman. I mean, just 17 to 31. You're under 200 yards passing. It, it hasn't provided the spark. Certainly not yet. And he's going to go down and down in a hurry. Amari Gaynor all over his back for the sack. And a loss of 11. And really, you know, Gatum wins right away. Whip doesn't do a good job here at left tackle. So he, he's beat quickly. With that being said, if you play on time, you knew you had press coverage. You knew you had single high safety. He has a seam to his, his right that if he throws early enough, it's probably a walk-in touchdown. Seven tackles and a sack. 
for Gaynor. Hockman. Incomplete again. On a low throw. 31 to 13 FSU. And fourth down and 21. And if you're Florida State in this situation, no pass interference, it's fourth and forever. No pass interference and no late hits on the quarterback. It's something that's that's plagued you before in situations similar to this. Hockman off the fake and incomplete. Right through his receiver, Hines. And so it goes back over to Florida State. It's just a drop by Hines. It's a perfect throw. Hits him in the chest on fourth and forever, and Hines probably is able to stay on his feet and maybe run into the end zone. Well, that was the big play they were looking for. They've been looking for that all night. Looking for it all night. You know, not a great night for Amezi. Had a couple of drops. Hines there with a drop. And... You know, it's situations like this, you know, when you have a team, whether it's a guy that's inexperienced, which, you know, Hines would be for, for this NC State team, or they're young, which some of their other players are. Is, you know, how do you respond in an environment like this? And it doesn't seem like a whole lot of guys are passing the test. Yeah, you learn a whole lot about your team in a place like this. On a little touch pass here. And it's Harrison. They're going to swarm on him. Let's get downstairs to Larisha guys when we were talking to some of the coaches there was a bit of concern about their players you know dealing with being tired a little fatigue because of the tempo that FSU runs well I'm looking on the sideline none of these guys seem to be tired at all actually they're ready they're pumped and they are eager to finish this game and it's fun to be up 31 to 13 that helps you know when you're when you're not giving away a lead it probably helps you play with a little more energy as well well, they've overcome some of those penalties tonight, able to cut them back last week. Some of them have still stung, but FSU has a healthy lead. And a rush by Laburn. He's tackled by Griffin. As we approach the six-minute mark, gain of one. And if Florida State can hang on and win, they would improve to three and two. Heading into the bye week, that should be a great feeling for the Seminoles to have cleaned a few things up, which they desperately needed to do. And part of what they're cleaning up, Dave, is this, adjusting your tempo. You know, six minutes left in the game, no need to hurry. Last time they were up there, they snapped the ball inside five seconds. They're going to do it again here, basically, you know, in a four-minute offense situation. Incomplete. Trying to... Get that one into DJ Matthews. Could not make the catch. And so they will punt here on fourth and 12. Listen, it's not ideal, you know, to, to end up having to, to punt the football here after, you know, the turnover on downs. With that being said, different from what we saw in that game at Virginia, where they just were, they, they were, you know, hair on fire pace at that point. At least they're bleeding the play clock out to run a little time off the clock. Martin, a very high punt. And we'll take a bounce into the end zone. The flag is down. With five and a half to go. We are in the fourth quarter. NC State with only one loss so far. Legal formation offense. Five players in the backfield at the snap. Penalties to climb. That's our game next Saturday. Can't wait to get to Duke and Quentin Harris. What an effort last night against Virginia Tech. 100 rushing yards, three total touchdowns. I think there's elements of that Duke team remind you about Virginia. Offense yep. number 79, five-yard penalty, first down. They play good defense. 
and then they have a quarterback that's just hard to defend because he's a true, you know, dual threat player. Glenn Harris, good performance on the road versus Virginia Tech. Excited to see him next week. And what an effort by Jalen Hurts as well. 415 passing yards. He ran for 70, four total touchdowns today. About five and a half minutes to go. Hockman and the pass complete. There's also a flag on the play caught by Carter. But a flag down. And Samuels just gets there a hair too early. Pass interference, defense. The ball he plays in spot of the foul. First down. So NC State with a first down. With 5.24 on the clock here in Tallahassee. Bailey Hockman, the backup. First and 10. Fire to the middle and incomplete. Trying to hit there. Thomas again, but not this time. And Florida State not just sitting back, you know, playing zone coverage, playing soft. They bring a blitz there, bring the corner, and I think they're still coming after Bailey Hawkman and trying to cause some confusion. Second and ten on the 30. Hawkman nearly intercepted, batted right back to the receiver, caught by Hines, almost intercepted. By Cyrus Fagan, but Hines winds up with a catch. I've never seen this before. He's thrown a shallow cross, goes through the hands of Hines, then off of the defender that's going to pick the tip, and then caught again by the guy that dropped it originally. Wow. Off Fagan, and then right back to Hines. You get a drop and a catch all in the head. How, how do we score that? You might. We're checking on it. <laughs> Take another look. About four and a half to go. Hockman flushed out to his left, looking downfield. And a spectacular effort there, but incomplete. As Thomas is upended, a flag down again. Legal player downfield. Offense number 66. Penalties declined. Fourth down. Josh fed Jackson. That player. A big hit there. Thomas is taking a couple big hits tonight. Probably none bigger than that one there. Yep, Akeem Dent. Ouch. Not bending him. So fourth and ten here for NC State. Looking to throw again, and he hits his tight end, Angeline. And we'll pick up a first down. That is one big target. It's a big target. It's an outstanding job by Trent Penix in it, running back in pass protection, and Angeline able to use that big body to shield the defender. False start, offense, number 50. Five-yard penalty, first down. Instant GIF time. And the play of the night so far. That, that is an instant GIF time. I'm also pleased to see that you've already graduated to GIF, not GIF. From in, GIF. In one week that, th that you've done that. Took about a decade. That was pretty good. A lot of hard work went into that. That's First. that's one of those ones for the quarterback. You start running to make the tackle, and then you're like, oh, okay, yeah, good. Way to go. Yeah, yeah. Well done. Exactly as we drew it up. Hockman. With another flag, got a lot of them still on his feet. He stayed in bounds. Now he'll fire down another flag. Wait, too many of those here in the last five or ten minutes. With 338 showing. There are multiple fouls during the play, <laughs> holding offense number 50. Personal foul, rough in the passer. Defense number 93. His penalty is offset. First 
Personal foul on Amari Gaynor. And as said, they offset. But just too many of them here down the stretch. There was a lot going on there. I mean, we could be honest. There, there was a lot going on. I mean, guys out of the field, quarterback running the wrong way. I mean, we got receivers lined up six yards behind the line. I mean, Hockman passing over the center, right at the 50-yard line. Angeline again. I mean, you just take a look at the officials here. He's going to pick the flag, flag up and, and, and throw it. Give a little pass to your buddy here. Here's your flag. You need it. Whoop. <laughs> Listen, we've been a lot of flags tonight. A lot of them, especially Bums, in the second half. I was a little tired from throwing. The accuracy's impacted. Hockman wriggling free and finds a receiver that is Powell on the sideline. Pressured by Nazrul Dean, who does that a lot. He can really get after a quarterback. You see that 20 penalties tonight Dave you see it's kind of like throwing 100 pitches for a pitcher at that point you start to lose a little velocity yep. some accuracy a lot of stuff 20 accepted penalties incomplete and more pressure on the quarterback by Josh Brown I'll tell you what Bailey Hawkman has taken a beating tonight. And he's going to hobble out. And Devin Leary, the freshman, will become the third quarterback to be used in this one by the Wolfpack. And if you think about the way Matt McKay finished the Ball State game, started this game, obviously wasn't what Dave Dorn wanted to see. And so we see, you know, Bailey Hockman, he doesn't spark this offense. Where he throws and complete for first down. You almost, to Powell. You, you almost wonder, Dave, if if this ends up being an option for them going forward. Highly talented, talented recruit. You see Hawkman here earlier in that drive. You know, gets hit and gets you know, thrown to the ground. Looked like it was something in his lower body bothering him, but Larry got it off quick. Jackson with the hit on Penix. Now, did you think about Leary? I mean, you, you have a state champion quarterback and a highly recruited guy, and you're not happy with how your first two quarterbacks have played. Not to say that they're unhappy with, with Hawkman, but it, it certain didn't, certainly didn't create the spark they thought it would and didn't get a ton of help from his receivers, but you, know, you got a bye week coming up, trying to find something to get this offense going. And, of course, Hawkman forced out because of an injury coming up. After the game, all ACC will have scores, highlights, breakdowns, and post-game interviews from all of today's games. Nobody covers the ACC like we do. That's coming up next here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. And a very solid night for FSU here in Tallahassee. The crowd came out to see him tonight. That's got to make head coach Willie Taggart very happy because on Monday, he talked about that quite a bit. You know, come on out, call some friends, bring your whole family. Obviously, the attendance is thinned out here in the fourth quarter, but they had a nice crowd tonight and a loud one. I agree with you, Dave. They showed up, and they made noise, and they had you know, somewhat of an impact on the game. No more flags. Ball start. Offense number 79, five-yard penalty, second down. A very sloppy end to this one. It has been. You think about Florida State, though. You're down 24-21 in the fourth quarter to Louisville. Alex Hornibrook is able to bring you back. They could have easily, if he's not able to do that, we could have been looking at a one and three team. Obviously, you know they come into this game, you know two and two, get an ACC win here, and you know a much different feel around the program. Catch by Carter. And a 14-yard gain. FSU seeking their first consecutive ACC win since 2016 after beating Louisville last week. 
Got a big lead, lost it, had to come from behind to win that game. Tipped away in the end zone and incomplete. Broken up by Ronaldo Green, intended for Carter. Under two minutes to go. Leary just doesn't put enough you know, air on this one to Carter. Give him a chance to go fight for it. And, you know, Dave, you mentioned those two ACC wins, you know, the back-to-back -back wins for Florida State. And, you know, the first time we talked to Willie Taggart, he really talked about the confidence of his football team needing to be better. And you, know, you would think you string together a couple of wins in the conference. Defense plays as well as it's played tonight that, that maybe that's what this team needed to, to have that happen and, and build some confidence. Well, there is a calmness with Hornibrook, is there not? I mean, that's inherent in his style of play. Different style of play with James Blackman, who's a very, very good creative quarterback and a guy that they really love to play around. But Hornibrook has really gotten a foothold here these last couple of games. I don't think there's any question about that. That's completed the break three. Fisher lost it. And it's recovered by FSU. The fumble picked up by the Knowles. Recovered by Emmett Rice. The well, receiver tried to continue on and make more out of the play and lost the football. Yeah, and it's a great hustle play by Amari Gaynor. You see him run that down from behind. About ready to be a touchdown. And it's pursuit to the football. Fagan misses the tackle, but late in this football game, Gaynor, who's played a ton of snaps in place of the injured Lars would be, just look where it comes from. I mean, he's rushing the quarterback, turns, retraces his steps, runs that play down from behind. That's an awesome effort. You know, the defensive side for Florida State in the opening weeks was hotly criticized, but they've played a terrific game tonight against NC State, who came in averaging about 34 points a game. One of the top offenses in the ACC. So Florida State, impressive in many ways tonight. They were leaning towards starting James Blackman. That was the plan until he tweaked that knee yesterday. Willie Taggart going back to Alex Hornerbrook and yet another fine game. And you wonder if anything has changed now. I mean, it, they told us that James Blackman was going to start. And, you know, seems like he didn't because of the injury. But now has something changed? And from where I sit, it seems like it should, but not Willie Taggart. Hornerbrook will take the knee. FSU with three long touchdowns. Terry, 44 yards. Wilson, 39. And Akers with that 41-yard rush into the end zone. And Willie Taggart and FSU to celebrate a victory tonight over Dave Dorn and the NC State Wolfpack. It will go in as a final of 31 to 13 here in Tallahassee. That's a big win for Willie Taggart, a really big win, and I think that he's kind of positioned himself to have some tough decisions, you know, ahead of him with the quarterback situation, but, you know, as you head into a game at Clemson to feel like you maybe are playing your best football of the season, well, it's a couple weeks away, but it's the next one on the schedule. Let's go down to Larisha with Willie Taggart. Coach, you talked about finishing. How would you describe how your guys put things together for you all tonight? Well, I think our guys finished. They did what they were supposed to, and uh, they came in the second half and played ball like we were supposed to. Um, totally different than what we did all year long. And, again, it's another win for our guys. Um, it's another little win for our guys, and it's good to see our guys finding ways to win and finding corrections from, from weeks before. What would you say was a strength that you saw from Alex Hornibrook tonight? Well, it's just... His accuracy, his, his leadership, and how he gets everybody in, in the play. And then he does a great job of keeping the play live and, and allows to get some explosive plays. 
the fans showed up. They heard your plea from your press conference on Monday. How would you describe their support? Uh, the, the support's always been there. You know, we, we have a rabbit fan, fan base. Our fans are excited about football. They look for winners. They want winners. And all they want is our football team to win. You know, so um, I told our guys to go out. Let's give them what they want. And our guys are starting to do it now. Thank you so much, Coach. Thank you very much. Well, that is a nice win for Coach Taggart. And his defense was really, really tough tonight against an offense that has performed about as well as anybody other than Clemson, perhaps, inside the conference. Yeah, I mean, I think the defense is you know, probably the most surprising thing. I, I'm not surprised to see Alex Hornibrook play well. I'm not surprised to see their wide receivers create big plays. But the defense that has lost players because of injuries, lost starters because of injuries, really rose to the occasion and all the way down to the last defensive snap, played with great effort. You gotta hurry up. Let's go back to Larisha with the winning quarterback. So Alex, what would you say was a key component for the offense finding their rhythm tonight? I think a big thing for us, once we get drives going, once we start playing the way we want to play, which is fast, um, everything starts to open up for us. And um, I thought um, at the end of the first half and then at the whole second half, the O-line did a great job and they helped out, made a big difference for us, and then people made plays. You guys typically, you know, might get a little tired because of the tempo that you run. What did you what did you tap into to keep going? Um, we always say if we're tired, they're more tired than we are, so we just got to keep going. And what would you say about the way the defense played tonight? They really helped you guys out big they time. They did a great job. Um, there was a few possessions that we should have scored. We had some good field position, but they kept giving us the ball back the whole time. Um, they played real tough. I was real proud of them. They thank you out. so much. Yeah, thank you. Well, he had a big, big night. 29 out of 40, 316 yards, three touchdowns. He did a great job of, of keeping his receivers on the move like he does here to Tamari on Terry. He was able to take the slant for a touchdown. Then the slant and go to Wilson. An excellent ball down the field and good job on the play action. Draw the defense aside. Really efficient performance. And you know, I think in many ways, not surprised because we've seen him play good football in the past. We've seen the poise. We've seen him play in big games. And this is a big moment for him. Mm -hmm. And he handled it extremely well. And, and I would be surprised if we don't see him going forward as the starting quarterback for Florida State. Well, his mom, Don, was in tears when he came off the bench last week against Louisville and led them to that win. That's a very happy household again because Winterbrook was outstanding in this win. 31 to 13 tonight over NC State. For my partner, Tim Hasselbeck and Larisha Harris, I'm Dave O'Brien. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. Hope you'll be with us next week when Pitt takes on Duke in the ACC. Final again, Florida State 31, NC State 13, all ACC coming up next. Everybody. Welcome into All ACC. I'm Dallin Cuff, Coach Mark Richt, Eric McLean, EJ Manuel. You just saw uh, North Carolina State fall on the road to Florida State. You just heard Tim Hasselbeck say that Alex Hornibrook is the new quarterback, starting quarterback most likely. <laughs> I'll play the role of the fan. You watch him go out for throw over 300 yards. They win that game. Last week he came in before Blackman was hurt. He played well. He had to deputize the whole second half. They win that game. Should he be starting <laughs> come next game? Well, look, if James isn't completely healthy, of course he has to start. Now, if James is healthy, <clears throat> again, when you, have, when you have a backup come in and he plays well, the starter's sitting there, he's still kind of banged up, but all the fans are rooting for the backup now because he came in and they won. He had a great game, didn't have any turnovers. Just the night went his way tonight, and, you know, you can't be mad about that. you got to be extremely happy for a senior that went to the transfer portal. But to answer your question, I think James Blackman should be the starter when he is healthy. Um, he's the team's leader, but Alex came in and did a great job tonight. And again, we, we went through a quarterback competition and a guy came out victorious and was named the starter. I think until proven on the field that he no longer is the best option, you know, I think he's still the guy. 
So Hold on, I got, I got it. Look, if he got the but, but the quarterback competition took place about five or six weeks ago. We right. are now, we are now in the present day where he is one. And James last Blackman is still balling. Yes, and he's not the reason that he okay. didn't give up forty points to. As I said, I'm just speaking as the fan. Right, right. right. You, right. Yeah, fans, yeah, right. you tell me the fan exactly and the fan right. out there. Yeah, I would have wrong. loved to have seen Blackman play. It's working his way around too. I would have loved to see him play against NC State. I guarantee the numbers would be very similar, and he still would have been sacked eight times. So we've got a lot of other problems. Quarterback's not one of them. You got two great options. Well, we're going to come to you okay, right when we yeah. come back, Coach. We got Cam Akers. <laughs> he was balling out as always with Leticia yes. Harris down in Tallahassee. Leticia. Cam, what would you say click for you guys offensively tonight? Uh, just consistency. You know, uh, our defense has always had this in them. Uh, this is um, this is Florida State. So, uh, you know, we got a lot of dogs on that side of the ball and a lot of people who want to go after the quarterback and make plays. And now uh, this game, we did it for four quarters. Now you have the win going into the bye week. How is that going to help you guys keep that momentum going? Uh, you know, you always it's always good to um, get a win going into a bye week, into an off week, uh, so you can have that momentum going into the next game. And, you know, uh, it's a big win for us. It's a big conference win, and we're moving on to the next one. Your fans came out and supported you guys. Yeah. How happy were you to see everybody? When dope rocking like this, um, it's hard to beat us. You know, when we got the fans on our side, uh, 80,000 people, it's hard to beat us. Uh, and, and as you can see, uh, we came out and played ball. Thank you so much. Thank you. A game we thought, you know, James Blackman might play. Matthew McKay is probably the quarterback for, you know, NC State. Chief Osceola found out, like we all did. McKay is not going to be the quarterback. It's going to be Bailey Hawkman, the transfer from Florida State. He comes in. He starts slinging it around, finds Devin Carter for 33 yards. NC State's up 6-3. But here's Alex Hornibrook. He started, played every snap until late in the game. Actually, sat every snap for the entire game. That's your boy. Scary Terry. Demarion Terry. The speed on this guy, just yes, riding out. Nice looking receiver. They, couldn't, ga they couldn't gauge his speed. They, they thought they had angles on him. <laughs> Wasn't even close. Outran him. Well, here's another one. This one, though, Ontario Wilson. I'm telling you, man, this guy dropped a great bomb right here. Ontario did a great job of stacking, stacking the DB and it went even close. That was a little slant and go. He got a little separation and kept it. And Emac again. Scary Terry, he does it. This was a great play. They sell the, the run fake. My guy's running in there and then just breaks off on the skinny post wide open. And this game wasn't over because Florida State's had their issues in the fourth quarter, but they give it to Cam Akers. He rips it up 41 yards. He and earned that was your ball game. He earned his yards. Yeah. And one thing about it is, you know, he's been carrying this team on his back, and he didn't have to carry the team. He played his tail off, but they won without him carrying him to the finish line, which was a good sign, too. All right, we started the show talking about the quarterback situation. I didn't get back to you. So now we're like, I was, I was told in my ear I had to get somewhere right. else. So now this, sure. is, this is all you. If we had That's a spotlight, awesome. we just put it on you and we can right. lock in. Should Hornybrook be the quarterback for this team? It, even if Blackman's right. healthy and able to play next right. week, should Hornybrook still be right. the guy, un, quote unquote, under center? Can I be honest with you? you please. I forgot what I was going to say. From the <laughs> Coach like, I've been here too many hours. When you, re when you reach a certain age, you're like, you got to say it now. If you don't say it now, you're going to forget it. Oh, no. and that's on me. I got to <laughs> write it down. Coach, got to well, write it down. No, I was going to. No, I do remember. <laughs> uh, but what I was going to say is, I don't know who should play, but I think Horny Brook will play. Oh, wow. That's a good way to that's agree with guess. that. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. I mean, James may not be 100% healthy, but... I've been in this situation, and you hate to get hurt because you got a guy that you think might be able to come in and do what he did tonight, and he did that. So I, it's not only for the coaches to make this decision. You got a packed house in Tallahassee. A lot of the fans started to come back. So I know that fan base, they want they want to win. And when they see somebody come out and give a result like that, the well, fans Bob, might be calling I'll for say this, though. Coach Bobby Bowden did have a quote for that. He goes, if you listen to what they're saying in the fans, you're going to be sitting up there with the fans. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but I understand what you're Ticket saying. Ticket sales matter, Coach. We all know that. Hey, at the end of the day, we're right talking real too. now. We don't yeah. play anymore, Coach. Like, this business at the end of the day. And that Louisville game, there were no scalpers out there because the ticket right. would have gone for about eight cents. Right. Absolutely. Coach, I want to ask you about, you, you said the defense has more juice. Yes. Do you think it has anything to do with the addition uh, of having an analyst added right. to the staff, or is it just the guys it, wanting to play for each other. It's hard to say. It could be coincidental. Right. That it happened. It, it seemed to happen at that same week. That uh, who was it that came in? Uh, Levitt. Yeah, Levitt. Yeah, yep. Jim, yeah, I know Jim. He. he uh, <laughs> so anyway, I don't know. But I know this. The number one ingredient of defense is playing hard mm -hmm. and playing hard every down. But I mean, you, you're watching bubbles now, and you're seeing D linemen come sideline to. You know, coming out of the pile and going to the sideline and making tackles. Or even that last, remember that last uh, 
fumble yeah. that uh, yep. Florida State got in the Three end zone. Three guys were on the ball. One guy's rushing the passer, turns around, pursues the guy, and strips the ball out at the three-yard line, yeah. and the ball – I mean, that, that could have been the play to win the game right. if it was if the score differential wasn't what it was. I mean, but that's that says, the that kind of stuff. That says almost more, though. The game was already almost yes, out of hand, yes. and they came back and made that play. And then, then, you, then you turn the tape on Sunday or Monday, whatever you look, whenever you look at that tape, and you say, man, this is, this is what it looks like. Instead of trying to tell them what to do, you show them what to do, mm -hmm. and you praise that thing, and then everybody else wants to get the praise, Absolutely. and they start doing it too. We'll see if they have really turned a corner, but this is, I mean, a good back-to-back -back performance they've put forth, and they've been able to hold second-half leads and find, find a way to finish things.